It's all up here. Right. Okay, uh, we're ready to begin. First, I want to uh, thank you for coming. And for those of you joining us by YouTube, um, it's pretty exciting. We have uh, folks, I believe, from 19 countries logged on today. So I just want to say hello to a few, Terry and uh, his wife in the Philippines, Dr. Dan, who is there with a medical mission group and has our first Spectrebrite that's been donated to for for use. It's been taken there for uh, the typhoon victims and they've had a lot of physical problems. So Dr. Dan is there doing some treatment and therapy and learning more about the device and how it works. Um, we also have folks from Australia, from, let's see, Philippines, Australia, Singapore, Hong Kong, Canada, Brazil, Colombia, Venezuela, Cayman Islands, um, Finland, Sweden, Germany, um, Axel in Germany, Guten Abend. Uh, we have Dr. Charity and uh, some others in Ghana, Aquaba, nice to have you with us. Uh, South Africa, goodness, uh, a lot of places. So it's exciting for us to be able to offer this to you. And the reason that we're bringing this uh, video training today is this. Uh, many times when people start to see a benefit of some kind, suddenly what was used for a sore shoulder or psoriasis or another problem, suddenly people think we can raise the dead and grow limbs. And that's just not the case. So we want today to try to bring some sanity and direction to the use of our equipment and let you know that um, there are limitations on anything. And we'll get to some of those later on in the, in the broadcast. But um, I want you to know that you do not have permission to use this material in any way without our written approval. You cannot capture it, rebroadcast it, use it in your own personal training materials. Uh, because we're trying to bring some definition and control. So anything that's said today is company material. Anything that is said today is for our use and our distribution only. It's for your benefit and your education. But before you decide to take off on your own and take clips and pieces and snippets of this, that's not permitted. You have to get written permission and we have to see in advance what you're going to do. Because we want this to be available, as you'll see later on today, there are so many people being blessed and benefited and helped that uh, we want to make sure that nothing happens to that or to our technology. A couple of people I want to thank today. First, I want to thank the Lord God Almighty for his graciousness and goodness and his mercy in allowing us to learn and to receive information. Uh, secondly, um, we have presenters today, uh, Rhonda Tomasi and Twyla Wilson and Dr. Stephen Vaughn and myself, who will be sharing material. Uh, my son, who put all of the, the video broadcasts together, uh, Abraham Asari, who assembles the equipment and is a tremendous assistant and aid to me. Uh, and so many, uh, Dale, who my partner, business partner, who's allowed us to use his facility. So we're very grateful for all that uh, has been done to prepare us for today with the intent that we can share with you something we believe is an emerging technology that is going to bring over the next several years and decades benefit, help to many people in many areas, but nothing fixes everything for everybody. So we have to remember that. Uh, use it as it's intended, use it for what it's purposed, and if we find other things, we'll be happy to let you know that those are developing on a larger scale. But please, uh, use restraint, use wisdom, be prudent, and uh, remember the rules under which we have intended to operate. So uh, with that said, um, I want to tell you just briefly about the equipment. Uh, Spectrebrite was developed after our company being involved in light therapy for about 20 years. Uh, we have learned a lot. Uh, we, have, we have been blessed to learn a lot. And over the years, as we learn bits and pieces here and there, we discovered that there are certain things that seem to work much, much better than others. And some things that we have learned is that if you have a light source that is pulsed at certain frequencies, the benefit is greatly enhanced and um, the delivery is enhanced, so you get more photonic energy, more development, more therapy. 
Um, <clears throat> so we have included in our device, and we'll show it to you this afternoon, uh, we have the ability to hold 999 different programs. We can generate any, almost any color on the spectrum that we would like from uh, ultraviolet to infrared. And with those therapies being in a wide variety and pulsed, when they're pulsed into the tissue, you get better delivery, deeper delivery, more energy delivery. And the result of that is that the body receives that energy and starts to change in the same way that photosynthesis affects a plant. The light energy comes, it hits the green leaf, the leaf then converts that light energy into chemical responses within the plant, and that's how the plant grows and is healthy. Take light away from a plant, it dies. The same thing for the human body. If we don't receive the right energy into ourselves from light uh, sources, the body does not function correctly. So light energy converts into chemical responses, physiological responses in the body. And you'll see as the day goes on and we give you the science and the application and the history as that occurs, you'll see as we continue that the benefits are much more diverse than we originally thought. So we are in the process right now of filing our FDA uh, approval that is uh, nearly finished, ready to be submitted. We also now have a trainer's uh, manual, a user guide that is available that will go out in all of the new devices uh, as they're shipped. So also, um, um, we have uh, light wands that deliver certain frequency bands of light color for specific uses and purposes, reflexology, energy meridians and so on in the body. So as we go through the day, uh, take good notes. If you have any questions, we'll allow those to be submitted. You can submit them on the comments section of YouTube. You can submit them to the phone number that was given to you on the uh, beginning of the, uh, when the material was sent to you. And those questions submitted will be addressed in the afternoon session. Uh, after Dr. Bond's presentation, we'll have a session for questions and answers and we will try to address as many of those as possible. Uh, the challenge is we won't be able to get to all of them, of course. Um, I, I, got, I got one question from a gentleman earlier. It would take 30 minutes to answer that one question. So we're obviously not going to get to everybody's questions. What we'll try to do is to group them into categories so that as we go through the day, uh, make good notes, submit your questions, we'll categorize them, and address as many as we can this afternoon. So I want to thank you for being a part of our presentation today. Thank you for logging in from all over the place. We have about 30, 20, 20 to 30 states that have logged on. Um, Carlos and your group up in the Pacific Northwest, and uh, we have a group in Indiana, Charlie, and we have uh, folks in New York. So there, there are lots of places that have logged on, and we just are thrilled that you have the concern um, to learn and educate and inform yourself so that you can be a benefit and a blessing to a lot of people. So with all of that said, uh, we want to go to our first presentation, which is the history of light therapy. Most people don't know that this has been around a long time. Uh, when you first learn of anything, you think, aha, I've discovered something new. Well, you know, we're told in scripture there's nothing new under the sun. And we found that that really is true. But learning how to specifically apply the benefits of something may be new. So Rhonda Tomasi is going to share with us the history of light therapy. Uh, Rhonda has a Bachelor of Science degree in Marketing and Management. She has studied the Dell Davis's National Remedies to mainly in the beginning to help herself at age 23 and then began to help a lot of other people. Uh, has read a lot of books and studies and developed an, a, a national uh, childbirth class that she taught for 12 years in hospitals and other places. She and her husband uh, have campaigned for upper cervical and have been a, a real blessing to that community. Her husband James had tried adrenal neuralgia and suffered greatly from that and as a result of upper cervical use uh, application and therapy. He has had relief and went from being suicidal to, to being a teacher and a speaker for chiropractic cervical chiropractic for not just this country but in lots of places. They've traveled to Honduras, and Kenya, Ghana, Costa Rica, Italy, 
where they've trained uh, chiropractic uh, physicians. And um, Rhonda has worked in lots of businesses. She is the, goodness, <laughs> she's the CFO of uh, ICS, International Christian Servants, and the president of IUCPAA. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, Upper Cervical Advocates Association, and now is the manager of uh, Rapid Relief Solutions, which markets light therapy devices. Has a lot of experience in the field and has a wonderful presentation for the history of light therapy. So, Rhonda, if you'd come, please. Thank you, David, and hi, everyone. I know if you're on today, you have a desire to help people which is what brought all of us that are involved with the Spectrobrite together into this arena. We all want to see people, especially with chronic conditions, be helped. Now, I have, um, David, thank you so much for the intro. I just have a small disclaimer at the beginning, and it's basically what David said earlier, but all information that's presented is for personal enlightenment. Neither Spectrobrite Associates, presenters, or anyone affiliated or representing the entities associated with Spectrobrite or the American Light Institute assume liability or responsibility for any results, either directly or indirectly, from experimental or practical application of this information. It is the sole responsibility of the user, reader, or hearer to seek the advice of professional health advisors. When we get to the end of this presentation, you're going to appreciate that statement a lot more when you realize how much, well, how big the price has been paid by certain medical professionals for saying things that we're going to say today and share. So my question in the beginning is, do we need a new paradigm? Thousands of drugs are on the market and thousands of major side effects from those drugs. The British Medi Medical Journal in June of 2013 told us that 97% of the patients taking hypertensive medications suffered from significant side effects and that 17% of their symptoms remained. Four out of pa five patients have concerns about the side effects. They question the need for drugs now. They're considering alternative approaches and the possible long-term dangers, which include death. I listed some of the drugs that are currently out there with their side effects. I'm not going to go a long ways into them. Um, I did notice birth defects, risk of infection, kidney failure, swelling, and impaired taste. Because these are some of the things that we deal with with the Spectrobrite that seem to overcome some of those side effects. Then uh, tinnitus, painful urination, and all the way down to shallow breathing and loss of appetite, headaches, and death on this one. So let's look at the how. Do we have some recognized alternatives that? patients or the general public and even medical professionals and health professionals are now looking at. Yes, we do. Homeopathy, I learned, is the number two science in the world. Chiropractic, osteopathy, naturopathy, reflexology, acupressure, massage therapy, radionics, kinesiology, magnotherapy, iridology, hypnotism, music, which I've found interesting during the study of light because I've learned that it's associated with the frequency level, and each note of the music is correlated to life. Herbology, which is the T TCM, vitamins and supplements. So from that, we know that there can be a synergistic effect in someone's health when they utilize one or more of those holistic methods. Today, our focus is going to be on frequency and color therapy. If we're going to look at those, we need to have in mind the history of the pioneers of light science. The earliest mention was in the Bible and the Torah about light and energy, darkness, light being an energy force. And then we go into the 14th century and there was Sanskrit writings from India. This is the classical language in the Indian culture, the high language used for science and religion.
but they talked about the chakra points which directly relate today's modern science to the endocrine glands and they learned that personality would correlate or res and or respond to personality types. Then we go into 980 to 1037 and we look at a Vicenna. He ended up being kind of a prototype for many of the philosophers and early science. He was in Persia. He wrote a book, The Book of Healing, along with 450 other writings, 40 of which were on me medicine and they were all relative to light and color therapy, which I think is fascinating. Then we go into the 17th century with Sir Isaac Newton. He was an Englishman. He developed a prism that decompressed white light into the many colors of the visible spectrum. Then we had Dr. William Walston in the 1700s, 16 to 17. He was again British in the Royal Society. He wrote many letters and published Thomas Young on the eye and vision in science medicine. He developed the wave theory of light, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. And then Joseph von Fraunhofer, who was in Berlin, Germany, did the de determination of the retro or the refractive and color dispersing power of the different types and colors of glass. The wave theory of light became a basis for most of modern science and even medicine and is very influencing on what we do or David's developed with the spectrobrite. We know that ultraviolet light is measured in the thousandths of a millimeter. It's invisible except for chemical reactions, whereas the infrared light is invisible but has thermal effects. In, they're incapable of appreciably affecting the eye retina, according to this resource, although I know with the class 4 lasers we're particularly careful that we don't rearrange the corneal aspect of the eye by wearing the goggles on us and the clients. We know the velocity, the length, and that wavelengths invoke energy that results in color on the retina which determines the complexity of the wavelength and the vibration. This is very interesting because this is also the, the point that we now know that certain music notes relate to certain wavelengths. So we have color, frequency, music notes, and we have nutrition that ties in there. Another predecessor was Joseph von Fraunhofer. He was in Bavaria and he developed a refracting instrument that would work on the light. Gustav Horsoff in East Prussia had the concepts in circuit theory, theory that was named Kirchhoff's Laws. As you can see, he had a Rumford Medal for his research on the fixed lines of the solar spectrum and the inversion of the bright lines in the spectra of artificial light. In, he worked at the same time with Robert Van Bunsen. Most of us are familiar with the Bunsen burner. He invented a prototype of today's spectroscopes. And he was able to... Max Lusher, which took a totally different bend to all the studies up to this point. And he began to, as a Swiss psychotherapist, entertain the thoughts that personalities and temperaments could be correlated to color. And the Lusher, if I have it on there, you can Google Lusher color test at the top, and there's a test that he's developed that you can pinpoint by choosing the colors, and it'll do a, a biographical readout of you and you can test it and see how close it is. It's very interesting. Anyway, he created a basis for physical and psychological diagnosis with light. I, 
I found it interesting. I was sharing the light with our associate pastor one day at the church we attend, and his response to me was, that is so interesting because my wife worked at the Murrah bombing building in Oklahoma City when all the, the attendees were coming in or volunteers to help clean up. And someone brought a light therapist from somewhere, he didn't remember where, and they would use colored light in a mirror behind the, the uh, volunteers who were digging in the rubble to decompress and stabilize their emotion level. Isn't that fascinating? So we come to some of the more prominent pioneers in what we're doing today. Dr. Seth Pancoast in the late 1800s wrote The True Science of Light. He described light and its rays as medicine. He um, also said that light is nature's own and only remedy for disease, which in some of the follow-up, you're going to see a lot of the medical doctors held that same viewpoint. And he gave us how to apply the red and blue rays in curing the sick and feeble in his book. This was followed by Dr. Edwin Babbitt from New York, who wrote The Principles of Light and Color, and also in the same time frame. He was a true pioneer of light therapy in the medical arena. His importance was because he influenced Dr. Gaudiali. Dinshaw Gaudiali was born in India. He was a child prodigy. At the age of three, he was in primary school. At the age of eight, he was in high school. And at the age of 11, he was an associate professor of mathematics and science. He also spoke 16 languages. Do you know anyone that does that? No. I think that he fascinates me, and I think that's why we have a lot of our basis on what he did and accomplished because he started off at a rapid rate. At 14 years of age he began to study medicine but he soon became disillusioned with the traditional medicine that was offered. So his other professions were electrical and mechanical engineers. In 1896 he visited the US, met Thomas Edison, Nikola Tesla, and he began to lecture on x-rays and radioactivity. New York Times dubbed him as the Parsi edition, or the Parsi Edison, I'm sorry. And then in 1897, he became a reformist in India. He had a treatment for the bubonic plague, where his sufferers recovered 20% higher ratio-wise than the traditional medical treatments at the time, and he utilized Dr. Babbitt's technology with light. In 1897, he began a 23-year experimentation of developing spectrochrome science, which is using colors to effectively heal people. We'll use the word heal with him. He was a theater manager. He kept going in and out, but his passion, as you can see, was curing incurable diseases, but he had to make a living, so he went into other things. He married, started a nonprofit for the poor, and then got himself in trouble because he would write weekly editorials exposing corruption and he actually developed and overcame TB with color. In 1911 he immigrated to the US with his wife and two sons. He developed an a automobile fault finder invention and gave it to the United States government. It was valued at more than hundred thousand dollars. It was for aircraft engines. Put our airline industry way ahead. 1970, he became a naturalized U.S. citizen. 1918, he was governor of the New York police. In 1920, he held his first class on spectrochrome. He had over 1,200 students in that 12 years. He uh, was joined by Dr. Kate Baldwin, and that's a typo there. Shouldn't be Babbitt, it should be Baldwin on this slide. Who was later forced to leave her hospital because of the stand she took in favor of color therapy and the spectrograph work of Dr. Gaudiali. His institute was burned down three months prior to his second trial. The court ruled all books left must be destroyed. 
He had over a quarter million dollars in assets and research equipment and books that were all destroyed. And he was allowed to keep one set for personal use. The FDA deemed his medical device uh, a, a sham. 1953, his, uh, he, a new nonprofit was formed with no therapeutic value assessed. USDA in 1959 did allow a permanent injunction on his units and books, and then he died in 1966. His sons dissolved the corporation and made an educational nonprofit in 77 and rewrote his manual and encyclopedia, which I th believe David has for sale today if you have an interest. There's requests from Germany increased for his materials beginning in 1985. And you'll understand that as we progress through. His most not notable student was Dr. Kate Baldwin. She was the senior surgeon at the Women's Hospital in Philadelphia for 23 years. MD, fellow AMA, and FACS. She was, um, she was his star witness in the first trial when the AMA took him to court. There she testified on his behalf in 1931, and her testimony with the case turned all nine jurors in favor of him and overturned the AMA attorney. She died, however, in 1935 which was key that they then started another trial. This is some of her quotes in her court document. For centuries, scientists have devoted untiring effort to discover a means for the relief or cure of human ills. Yet in neglected light and color, there is a potency far beyond that of drugs or serum. The body will, through its own radioactive force, appropriate them and so restore normal balance. Color is the simplest and most accurate therapeutic measure yet developed. Remember, she had spent 23 years in the surgical hospital. After using color for six of the last 37 years of practicing medicine and surgery, I can say that I produce quicker and more accurate results with color than with any or all other methods combined and with less strain on the patient. Some of the ailments that she treated that are noted in her writings were sprains, bruises, trauma, septic conditions regardless of the organism, cardiac lesions, asthma, hay fever, pneumonia, inflammatory conditions, corneal ulcers, glaucoma, cataracts, and carbuncles. You'll be interested to stay tuned into the anecdotal stories at this today's conclusion, because a lot of those things are uh, affirmed with the spectra bite. She gives the case of an eight-year-old who had first, second, and third degree burns over 75% of her body. In fact, not only does she cite the case, she was smart and she took before, during, and after pictures, which are in the, in the uh, Denshaw book that we mentioned that David has. And the pictures show the before, the burns over 75%, and at the conclusion, you don't see one scar on that little girl's body. Amazing, isn't it? This was again in the late 30s, or the, yeah, in the late 20s and 30s. So burns, the prior cause from red hydrogen side of the spectrum, so she used the opposite <coughs> side, which was blue, as oxygen to produce the rapid healing. She lessened the scar formation by softening the tissues and, and uh, used flexible scarlet to the kidneys for 20 minutes, which allowed the little girl to begin to have normal urinary function, which actually saved her life. And that was in the very beginning. I, I did not put in our slideshow, but I can just tell you I have before and after pictures of scars that I've been using on the light on different people, and it's greatly diminishing the scars. In some cases, they've gone from as wide as my thumb to my little finger, and I have pictures of that, and they've gone from bright scar tissue red down to white. Oh, let me go back to that. This was her final statement to the AMA attorney. I would close my office tonight and never reopen if I couldn't use spectrochrome, which is color therapy. She did end up losing her job at the hospital after that. Um, 
Then we have proven, proven cures with light and frequency. One of them was Dr. Olney in the 49 through 60s. He, was pub, he published a pamphlet, finally, instead of literature, with five cases of cancer that were 100% cured with UBI, photooxidation. Then we have Dr. John Ott, who also published cases on polio, asthma, thrombolocytosis, bacterial infections, pneumonia, HIV and AIDS, ADD, ADHD, psoriasis, blood poisoning, appendicitis, septus, pregnancy, toxemia, and arthritis. How many of you have known people with those? I do, and some of them died in the hospital. Then we have Krakow, a Russian scientist who wrote Color Visions and Autonomic Nervous System. He validated the autonomic nervous system response to red color, with blue being the stimulating uh, portion. Robert Girard in the late 50s validated the Krakow findings, and he evaluated color on the emotional responses similar to Lushner. He wrote the differential effects of colored lights on psychophysiological functions. He was a PhD at the University of California in Los Angeles. Dr. Harry Walfords in Alberta, Canada stepped in at the same time frame and he noted blood pressure responses. Respiration and pulse rate increased maximum under orange and the least response occurred under black followed by blue. That was in Light Medicine of the Future. Then we have Dr. Gerald Lucy in the 60s who validated blue light therapy for jaundice newborns. That particular therapy is still used in hospitals today. Uh, Alfred DuPont Award for Excellence in Children's Healthcare was given to him. He had a worldwide reputation as a leader in uh, neonatal research and was a founder for newborn infants. Dr. Sharon McDonald in 1982 did a study on 60 female patients in, on rheumatoid arthritis in California. Her conclusion was pain relief is directly relative to length of time using blue lights. Dr. Fritz Hollowich in 86 studied stress factors of individuals sitting under cool white versus full spectrum lights. His result findings were that cool light subjects experience changes in their endocrine systems. Remember that second slide about the Sanskrit writings, the chakra points and the endocrine glands, such as ACTH and cortisol stress hormone. No stress noted under the test group was given in artificial natural light. Based on his research, the cool white bulbs are banned in German medical facilities. Dr. John Ott in the mid-80s also chronicled studies of chiroplast proving plant cellular function could be altered by red and blue light or cessation of lights. I have a slide later on showing some of the differences that are affected in plant growth under different colored lights. Cool fluorescent lights lack the red and blue violet ends of spectrum. That study was done in West Germany. In the 60s, Dr. Ott proved that filtering out normal sunlight caused cells in animals to contract, to contort under blue and to rupture under red light. Mice living under pink or daylight fluorescent lighting had lifespans half as long as those with normal unfiltered sunlight and it was added um, to the full spectrum tubes, vital light at that time. There were multiple tests done, particularly by the university in Austin, about school lighting. And it showed the negative effects of cool white fluorescent lights in office buildings and schools, which included hyperactivity, fatigue, irritability, ADHD, and increased cavities. Who would have thought that our schools could be killing us? When full spectrum lights were installed within one month, behavior improved and academic imp performance improved while disabilities reversed. Then we have uh, Ori Bakalachi who did the Kava light and she demonstrated that food and water could be modified with full spectrum lighting. There's energy that's emitted 
in healthy cells in a healthy body, which Twyla is going to do during the science portion, and it's phenomenal information that she gives. This structure differs from cancerous cells. The benefits are balancing of pH water based on minerals. It alters the taste of food, alters the characterization of freezing and boiling, and when treated, water is consumed through food or beverage, it will energize and balance the nutrients in food which benefits them when transferred to the, the body. When you get to the stories, you're going to hear the term or read the term charged water. That's what the charged water that some of the clients used with the Spectra Bright colors is based on. The conclusion, I think I hit that, hmm. was that the, well, I guess we're not going to have a conclusion. Maybe if I hold it down. Whoops. <laughs> Learning how to use this. Oh, well, we had a conclusion. The uh, Emmett Knott and Dr. Hancock, wonder why I'm jumping around. Any ideas? Down at the bottom. A pause. No, on the mouse. With the mouse. On the mouse. Would that be at the top or the right. bottom of the mouse? You want to help me? Because I don't know where pause is on Apple. Sorry about this. Modern technology. Back up one more. One more. If I can. There we go. The absence or imbalance of naturally present spectral light components cause a reduction in physiological, emotional, and intellectual function. As we increase our knowledge of color and light therapy, we can develop better methods of therapeutic and preventative treatments and elongate our aging process. Which if you Google red light therapy on the internet, that's where most red light is used is to do away with wrinkles and improve skin tone. Um, I just happen to be on more on the health side. Now, we go back to Dr. Knott and Hancock, and they were the originators of photo irradiation and photoluminescence, which Twyla is going to bring us up to date on. The ultraviolet ray metabolism and photonic energy. Then Dr. George Miley in the 30s, same time frame as as Dr. Gaudiali and Dr. Baldwin were doing some research and they were a proponent of what Dr. Knott was finding. The thing that I found very interesting here is the timeline. There were multiple doctors in multiple countries during the same time frame researching color and light and they were all coming up with similar and validating conclusions. Taking UV treatments decreases the duration and the virulence of disease. Dr. Harry Lawrence in New Orleans in 38. The thing that's also very interesting is that UV treatments were brought into research hospitals in the late 30s. And the sepsis or mor morbid cases that the traditional medical doctors were given to die, mostly from bed, childbed fever, were sent over to the researchers using light therapy or the UV light in particular. And they had something, I think it was like a 76% recovery ratio on cases that were going to die. Whoops, touch that. And their findings included polio, cancer, um, sepsis, all kinds of things using light therapy. After Dr. Baldwin died and right before the court case for Dr. Gaudiali came up, the AMA came to the research hospitals with the pharmaceutical companies and said, look, you have a choice. And this is documented in Dr. Wallace's book. You can either dispense and get rid of all your light equipment, or we'll take all our funding away. So it started right there. So by 19, between 1941 and 1942, all experimentation and validation of light color therapy was removed from the U.S. and at that time in the 40s shipped over because Europe said, hey, here we are, bring it our way. And it really didn't come back into much knowledge of popularity until the 80s. That's why you see such a gap here.
in the timeline. In uh, Dr. N. R. Finson worked on the hemoglobin and had a hypothesis that it, all wavelengths of the UV light could be used to increase it. This was later uh, in 1980. The Soviet scientist, can't say his name, not even going to try, sorry, proved that the photons emitted from diseased cells could be transferred via photo, photon emission. So let's look at some terminology. Today we have several new terms evolving because patients and clients are wanting alternatives. CAM is a group of diverse medical and healthcare systems which practices and, per, and which practices and has products outside the allopathic system. There's a, a National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine, which is the NCCAM. Then you have the complementary medicine, which are therapies like acupuncture and massage. And these are used in conjunction with traditional or conventional therapies. Then you have the alternative medicine that's referred to in the use of CAM in place of conventional medicine. Then integrative medicine, which is yoga, medi meditation, that's in conjunction with the standard drugs and procedures in internal medicine. I'm finding it quite interesting. I have one client that is working with the insurance company because she wants them to cover her alternative medicine of color and light therapy, especially the UV spectrum. And they say, hmm, well, we're just getting into that. We do have some protocol codes for the low-level laser light, but we don't have any codes for the high level. And one of the reasons I sent her a PDF yesterday is because there was one group hired by Aetna Insurance that has all this long list of doctors saying there's, there's no benefit from light therapy. But then when you go on the internet and read EPUB articles, there's, I don't, don't want to say thousands, but if, if you took time to read, I'll say hundreds. There's hundreds of supporting documentation. So I think we're going to see some change coming in the future because patients are pursuing and they're wanting to know why does an insurance cover the things that will help me instead of the things that don't help me. It's a good question. Allopathic medicine is defined as germ therapy and psychosomatic patient compartmentalization. Uh, one author I'm reading is really big on not compartmentalizing the person but treating them as a whole person. And when you hear Twyla's presentation on the science, you're going to understand where his thoughts come on that. Then the current results are that disease is still increasing while recoveries are diminishing. And meantime, we're fighting bigger superbugs like MRSA, which we actually have a story at the end of the day about a MRSA client with light therapy. Renee DeVos took a wide strong stance and made a statement, bacteria and viruses are dangerous only when the body's natural balance is disturbed. Now, Rene lived in the 80s, died in 1982. He was a French-born American microbiologist. He was the winner of the Pulitzer Prize for general nonfiction, So Human and Animal, because he had to list a lot of his research on animals because of the day and time. He was credited with as being the author of Think Globally but Act Locally. His life work and empirical study was on microbiological bi diseases and the analysis of the environmental and social factors that affect the welfare of humans. He was a Harvard Medical School graduate his scientific career was spent entirely at the Rockefeller Institute for Medical Research. He was later re renamed the Rockefeller University where he attended at work. And then in 1942, before antibiotics were in general use, Du Bois warned that bacterial resistance would be expected in the future. So it's not like we haven't known about all this. Uh, I'm sorry, we haven't known about this, but 
the medical science profession has. Dr. Oliver Wendell Holmes in 1860 said, I believe that if the whole Materia Medica, as it is now used, could be sunk in the ocean, it would be better for mankind, but all the worse for the fish. <laughs> he must have had an outstanding humor. <clears throat> Some miscellaneous proofs that I came up with were the poultry industry said that cholesterol was lowered by 25% in the eggs we eat if chickens were raised in a full spectrum light. Wow! Then um, fish that are hatched under a pink light are almost all females. It's, it is infrared light, not UV light, which causes cataracts and cancer, which <clears throat> in our stories at the end of the day, we have specific stories from cataracts being removed with the light wand that David has on the spectrobrite. Dr. John Anderson tested migraine sufferers and he found that 72% of migraine headaches could be stopped within an hour with red light treatments. 93% of the remaining 28% reported less pain. I've been in Dr. Vaughn's office and I know he uses that and, I'm, and I watch people respond to, to, to that benefit of the red light, the red and UV. The University of Texas studied the effect of red light to increase the speed or burst of energy in their athletes while blue would release progressive output of energy. How many coaches would love to have access to this knowledge? I mean, can you see colored lights being used on those running backs and, <laughs> and front line people? <clears throat> and then I thought this was fascinating. I'd heard about it. Alexander Schwass in Washington did an experiment in prisons with the color pink. And he found that he could reduce the violence in prisons with pink wall color or pink outfits on the prisoners. And I think I shared last time that I had, when my boys were wrestlers, state champions for Oklahoma, they would come against opponents that would wear pink tights because somebody had studied this. They lost, but you know, it was good, it, they tried. All right, let's look at some of the facts. How am I doing on time, by the way? You did great. Okay. You have 25 minutes. Oh, perfect. Good. Then I'm in the important part now. <laughs> All right. Royal Rife is one of the most fascinating people that are out there. His Rife machine and the 12 pages of printouts on Rife frequency studies that I have are still being used by patients today who don't know where to go and find a spectra, uh, spectra bright or a UV light source or anything, and they are getting results, albeit probably not as good as the combination of the color and frequency that David's developed. So in 37, his um, research sales were all shut down. And the main result, the main reason was because in 38, he had an 82-year-old cured of terminal cancer. He developed, um, J.C. Burnett helped him build a laboratory to produce 12 units that were bought by medical doctors. The, all units were confiscated because the AMA came in and said, nope, you're a scam, you can't do that, and they took, they made the, made an offer to all 12 doctors, MDs. They said either you give us your unit, which they later destroyed, or we'll take your medical license. 11 of them did that, kept their medical license, gave up the unit, which were destroyed. One of them moved, kept his license, and later moved to Europe. In 38, uh, it was the opening day of Rife's trial, and he was taken to court three different times. <clears throat> until they eventually bankrupted him three times. Rife Beam Ray was the name of his unit. There's not a lot, no one's been able to duplicate it to date, but it was proven to cure cancer. Sadly, the research was suppressed, <coughs> and um, Fishbein, who was the head of the AMA, Tried, went to Rife and said, you know, we could go do a joint venture together. 
and I could allow you to stay in business. And Reif rejected his offer, said, no, I don't want this corrupted. So that's when it went downhill again. Fishbein decided that if he couldn't control the therapy, then he would just suppress it, and he had the power to do that because of the AMA behind him at that time. His discovery mysteriously burned to the ground, along with the factory, and then he was dra dragged through the California court system with trumped up charges, which I have a slide later on about some of, in a blog where people are now recognizing those who are coming in with flat out lie statements are hired to post those things. So I thought, oh, we're waking up. So powerful were Fishbein's connections to the major medical groups of the day that many doctors who were successfully using Rife Beam had to cease their use for fear of being blacklisted or losing their license. And then he served multiple prison terms, he lost millions in court costs, and he died in a hospital from a Valium overdose in 1970. Because the Rife Ray Beam was suppressed by greedy, unscrupulous people, as quoted in Vibrational Medicine by Richard Gerber, MD. I'm not just saying this, I'm quoting. This cure for cancer was buried and nearly forgotten. It turns out that Rife was not the only researcher experimenting with using an electromagnetic field device to treat cancer, however. Another attack came on Denshaw Gadiali. I've mentioned that he went to court. His research lab in 1945 was burned down. No one ever knew who burned it down. We can put two and two together since the N.J. Rife, J.C. Burnett uh, lab was also burned right before trial. In 1953, the new nonprofit was formed. In 1966, Dr. Gadiali died. Others affected were Dr. Harry Hoxie in Dallas. He had the largest cancer treatment center in the world in the 50s. It was very successful. Even a Dallas judge ruled in federal court that his, ther that his therapy was comparable to surgery, radio, radium, and x-rays in effectiveness, but did not have the destructive side of the allopathic treatments. The AMA and the FDA both admitted under oath that this treatment could cure some forms of cancer. However, they organized this conspiracy to suppress the fair and biased assessment of, assessment of his methods and according to a 1953 report to Congress, they shut him down. He faced unrelenting opposition and harassment from the medical establishment. The Dallas clinic was shut down in the 50s at the end of the McCarthy era. Max Gerson was another one. He was German born. He wrote a cancer therapy, the results of 50 cases, and he used alternative dietary changes similar to those of Hoxie. The details of the profit process by which the AMA destroyed Gerson's professional reputation have been described by Ward and others. Gerson lost his hospital affiliation and was not denied malpractice insurance. Choices in Healing by Michael Lerner, page 612. Then we come up against chiropractic. The AMA didn't like chiropractic. They were successful in the scam, sham accusations they made for 40 years because most people, if you stop someone on the, on the side of the street, will say, oh no, chiropractic's not a true science, it's a sham. So they were successful in that. However, it cost Dr. Fishbein and the AMA somewhat. The AMA convicted, was convicted in federal court in 1973 of a conspiracy to destroy and eliminate the chiropractic profession. For over 12 years, with the full knowledge and support of their effective uh, elective executive officers, the AMA paid salaries and expenses for a team of more than a dozen medical doctors, lawyers, and support staff for the express purpose of conspiring overtly and covertly with others in medicine to first contain and eventually destroy the profession of chiropractic in the United States and elsewhere. 
Also convicted with the AMA were the College, American College of Surgeons, the American College of Radiologists, as quoted by Kenny Osbell, when healing becomes a crime. So the experts spoke on the AMA and Fishbein, and I found these very interesting. You know there, that term that says what goes around comes around? I believe we're in a time when all the persecution and the wrong done in the past is going to tilt the scales, as David says, of justice, and justice will begin to be served. Under oath, Dr. Fishbein made shocking admissions. He was the head of the AMA. He failed anatomy in medical school. He never completed his internship before going to work at the journal for the AMA, which he developed. He never practiced a day of medicine or treated a single patient in his entire career. His definition of a quack was one who pretends to medical skill he does not possess, which seems to be reflected in an unseemly mirror back on his own life. He was finally convicted of racketeering charges. He attacked personally and through AMA funding advocates of unconventional cancer therapies such as Gershon, Hoxi, chiropractors, <coughs> MDs, and previous pioneers of unconventional therapies including light therapy. The, the Political Action Committee, AMPAC, has given over $100 million over the last 20 years to 83% of the federal congressional senators and representatives. The AMA actually owns the very building in our nation's capital that the government leases for its federal political action committee monitoring programs. Does this put big red question marks in your mind? One judge ruled, I conclude that an injunction is necessary in this case. There are lingering effects of the conspiracy that the AMA has never acknowledged the lawlessness of its past conduct and in fact to this day maintains that it has always been in compliance with antitrust laws. The AMA was forced to circulate the contrite order of injunction through medical journals, hospitals, and many other outlets. <laughs> Did you hear about it? I didn't. They were also ordered to cease and desist from obstructing the professional rights of the chiropractic profession. So really, the science of chiropractic is what finally took them down to this point and got rid of fish fine, but then they just raised up a new one. The conviction marked the first time, the third time in the century that the AMA was found guilty of antitrust violations for conspiracy and restraint of trade. It was first convicted in 37 under Dr. Fishbein for trying to destroy autonomous doctors group that were applying cost-cutting health delivery and insurance in Washington, D.C. Again found guilty in 82 by the FTC, which was upheld by the Supreme Court. And uh, this verdict confirmed the AMA's decades-long systematic violation of an antitrust violations. The question is, has, has anything changed? So I went in and I pulled an extra slide in on Dr. Brzezinski. He has a clinic in Houston, Texas that is purported to cure cancer. He uses it with the antineoplastin therapy, which is a complementary or alternative treatment. And he has, if you want to look him up on the YouTube, I don't know, probably hundreds of videos from patients who claim to have been healed, even some after undergoing radiation and chemotherapy. And according to the National Cancer Institute, there is no randomized control trial showing the effectiveness of antioplastins that has been published in peer-reviewed scientific literature. So in other words, they don't support him. Now the question is why? How many millions of dollars, no, probably billions of dollars have been raised in the last 10 years for cancer research. If all those funds were moved over to Dr. Brzezinski instead of being used for 
quote, cancer research, what could be done? There's a lot of money at stake here, people. Brzezinski announced, treated his first patient and has been in trial cases since 1977. After the last 15 year long battle, the Texas Medical Board officially ended its crusade to evoke Dr. Brzezinski's medical license. <sighs> His, um, <laughs> this part I found disgusting because eventually, and because he was brought to trial for the third time, millions of dollars in prosecution cost. There were patients of his that took his case to Congress and they called in the FDA and the AMA heads who under oath testified on about that slide. There's no proven documentation. When they lost their case before Congress, the AMA and FDA, because of the patient advocates, the FDA agreed to do a preliminary test in Dr. Brzezinski's clinic where they forced him to open up all of his notes and all of his literature on his therapy. Immediately thereafter, they filed 19 orders of ownership for his technology. You know? So the government owns his process, essentially. So is there a change coming? Physicians are deeply divided over the efficacy of complementary and alternative science, but annually more and more patients are asking and using complementary and alternative uh, treatments on their own. But physicians are at risk when they endorse alternative <laughs> sciences. Um, they have to ask why is it and how is it acceptable, which all they have to do is watch Twyla's presentation and that answers all those questions. Is it med med medically acceptable? Well, no, not if you're on the pharmaceutical side, but yes, if you're on the getting patients well side. And they can possibly alienate patients who are ten tenacious believers in such um, CAM alternatives. I'm not going to go through all these because there's some more important things here. Uh, but you don't want to alienate tenacious believing patients. There are EPUB articles that state our patient stories, if only we could listen to them less critically and cynically, might actually inspire us to more practical, important discoveries. The answer that we're presenting today is that of color therapy combined with frequencies. The Spectrobrite is is manufactured by MHS. The inventor is David High. The color science is validated. Dr. Pankos, Dr. Babbitt, Dr. Baldwin, Dr. Denshaw, and the others that we listed in the 80s. The spectrum is conditions that respond to specific colors, which there will be a separate seminar on later. Visual versus UV light benefits and the addition of proprietary frequencies. Now, I've given you a resource list that you can look at if you have time. The books by Dr. Gadiali are Let There Be Light, his Spectrochrometry Encyclopedia, which gives a lot of history, more than I gave you today, and then Dr. Babbitt's Light and Color books. Dr. Jacob Lieb Lieberman put out Medicine of the Future and Take Off Your Glasses and See. I think he cites over 1,500 cases using light therapy. And then uh, I'm learning to really appreciate Reuben Amber and his take on color therapy. He says, color is a characteristic of the body that can be measured. For those who believe in a body-soul relationship, it appears color is the soul of the body. And Twyla will validate a lot of that. Uh, his book is excellent. This is my favorite, though. Dr. William Campbell has staked his professional license on the things that he reports in his book, Into the Light. 
It's the conscience of modern medicine. He is called the conscience of modern medicine and a medical maverick. He spent time battling malaria in Central America. He spent time in Russia. He's worked with U.S. Navy crews. He spent 10 years in emergency medicine in the U.S. He's a dedicated physician who spreads the truth about integrating the best science-based medical therapies from all medical disciplines within alternative medicine. He's worked with physicians at the Institute in Russia where advanced research of photoluminescence was being conducted. And he calls it tomorrow, tomorrow's medicine today. So with that, I invite each of you to consider the Spectrobrite as tomorrow's medicine for today. Thank you very much. I hope you can appreciate the reason that we're trying to bring some discipline and some regulation to our own business because many, many people have pray, played a great price to advance this science and technology forward. Uh, they have had their lives disrupted, their businesses disrupted, many have lost their health and their reputations to pioneer and bring to us something so simple, so beneficial and yet so uh, hated by the traditional medical community. So when we ask you to please pay attention, to behave yourself, to not get overzealous and excited, there's plenty of benefit and plenty of help that can be brought to people just with what we know so far. And as the research continues, we'll be sharing that with you. But it must be presented under the context of this is what people are telling us they are experiencing rather than us guaranteeing, claiming, we just can't do that because that's outside the boundaries and it will bring the wrath uh, down on us as well. So if we want to be in this for the long haul and help a lot of people, we have to discipline ourselves, behave ourselves, and, and live within those rules, okay? So we're going to take a, a break. In the next session, Twyla Wilson will be presenting the application, uh, the science of light therapy to let you know what, how this works in the body, why it works, and the research that's happened there. It will be a break of uh, about uh, oh, 20 to 30 minutes. i give you a chance to refresh yourself, and we'll re regather at that time. Thank you.
Whenever you're ready, Doug. We on? Okay. All right. A few little challenges, but we're back. Okay. We hope all of this is working well. Right, cool. We're ready Thanks for fine. the next uh, session, which okay. is the science of light therapy. Uh, a lot of people think that this is just hocus pocus. It's uh, positive thinking. That's not really true. There's real science behind this. But I want to remind you as we go into this session that this broadcast is the property of our company, a Millennial Health Systems, and is not available for you to use in any way under any format. And what we're trying to do today is educate you to the intent, to the purpose, that we bring structure and definition and control to the implementation of our technology globally. So we're grateful that you're with us, but please don't step outside the boundaries and create problems for us because we're wanting to do this right. Okay, uh, Twyla Wilson owns her own business, Vibrant Life Center, and is an integrative wellness counselor. Now, if I read all, I told Twyla, if I read all of this, we'd be here through her whole session, but uh, she's board certified with an integrative medicine <laughs> practitioner. What's PMA? Pastoral Medical Association. Pastoral Medical Association. She's licensed with them. Uh, her expertise is traditional Chinese medicine, homeopathy, naturopathic medicine, laser therapy, light therapy. Uh, she's educated at Trinity College of Naturopathic Medicine, naturopathic doctoral candidate, M uh, BA at the University of Oklahoma, AA at Rose State University, uh, Pepperdine University, MBA. MBA. Goodness, wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> um, she has uh, five branches, uh, Institute of, Ch of Traditional Chinese Medicine Training, uh, Oklahoma Healing Arts Academy, and certification in 15 different therapies, including light therapy. Wow. So when she tells you what you're about to see, you can take it to the bank. She's done extensive research. This will be a very exciting session. Please pay close attention and submit your questions for later in the day. All right, Twyla Wilson. So it's really a pleasure to be here today and to share with you what I think is an extremely exciting technology opportunity. I want to be sure that you know that my fundamental philosophy is that the body is designed to be self-healing. And so if we do things right, and we provide the body with the things that it needs, it can heal itself. Medicine, surgery, all those things augment those abilities, but really we are designed to be self-healing, and hopefully through my uh, presentation today, you're gonna understand some of the physics behind that or how that actually works. So let me see if I can drive this thing. Uh, today I'm gonna talk about what light is, how light, affects life and what we can use the light for for health and healing. Um, first, light is basically electromagnetic frequencies. It includes everything from radio waves to gamma waves and everything in between. Gamma rays are very, very, very tiny. You cannot see them, but those are like the particles that come from the sun that, you know, if, have any of you ever watched, you know, that movie in 2012 where the core of the earth heats up? It's actually premised on this idea that gamma rays are heating up the core of the earth, which is just science fiction, by the way, uh, but clever. Uh, the radio waves are very long. They're not very strong, but they're very long, the size of buildings. The visible light spectrum is just this tiny little bit, but this is actually the sweet spot for us, for all life, basically, and this is the part that affects us and can heal us and that we can work with. Uh, light travels in, actually, waves and particles. I'm sure you guys have all heard this, but, you know, it travels in waves or frequencies. So sometimes you'll hear people say it's this frequency. They're just talking about the size of the wave, if you will, you know, when they say that the longer waves have less power, but they go longer distances, and the shorter waves have more power, but they're, they don't go as far. Um, so also, I'm sure a lot of you have heard the word quantum, like in quantum physics, and you're probably going, what the heck does that mean? That starts to make everybody's eyes go kind of glassy. 
quantum physics is basically the study of light. So a quanta is a photon, and so when I talk about biophotons, I'm actually talking about biological light or quanta. So you can kind of know those words are interchangeable. So um, the visible light spectrum I showed you, it's just a very tiny pro uh, part of the overall light spectrum. But as I said, it's the very important part for us. And color is basically how we know the different frequencies of light. So if you look at blue light, it's at the far end in the 400 nanometer range. If you're looking at red light, it's in the 600 plus range. If you're looking at green light, it's in the 500 nanometer range. So if somebody was going to give you a light prescription, they might say you need 500 nanometer light. What are they talking about? Green light therapy, probably. So uh, just to kind of help you understand that a little bit better. Actually, Rhonda talked about this gentleman earlier, uh, Frauhofer. He actually discovered that the different elements, periodic table elements like hydrogen, nitrogen, sulfur, whatever, uh, they all have a very specific color and that actually this technology that he developed is how we know when they say, oh, uh, you know, planet you know, XYZ has iron on it, they know it by this, that we know it by its color. We also know that in our, own, in our world around us. So also you spoke a little bit about uh, light therapy as far as or color therapy for personality. I studied that in school, by the way. I thought that was very interesting. You brought that up. And uh, it turns out that people are very often gravitate to the colors that they need the most, or sometimes when they're really out of balance, they'll continue to expose themselves to colors that are suppressing their systems. And I thought that was sort of interesting. Another point I'd like to make on this slide is that your DNA is made out of five molecules, basically, or five elements. Red is hydrogen, blue is oxygen, green is nitrogen, black is carbon, and yellow is phosphorus, and those are the colors that are actually make up your DNA, which was, I thought was rather fascinating when I discovered that uh, through some of my research. I wasn't really thinking of it in that way, and you'll never see it represented like that in the books, which is kind of strange because they could represent it that way. They could show the yellow molecule as being phosphorus, but anyway, so when you look at those molecules in the books, you're not going to see it color coded that way, but that is in fact the, the right colors right there. Red for hydrogen, blue for oxygen, green for nitrogen. So as Rhonda talked about a little bit earlier, if you want to give somebody oxygen, like to treat their lungs, for instance, you would use blue. Now that corresponds to Chinese medicine, which we say that the lung meridian is actually needs blue, it likes blue. Or for instance, the liver meridian really likes green. So liver, gallbladder, digestive problems, you might find it would really benefit from that. Okay, so some of the ways that light affects life is that we all know sun, light, goes to the plants and the plants photosynthesize and that we consume the plants, we get the energy from the plant that way. And in fact, you know, all of our fossil fuels are basically ancient sunlight that's stored in the form of uh, hydrocarbons, right? We all know that too. Um, when we eat the plants, the light energy is released inside of us, uh, but I'm going to tell you that's only a little bit of the story. We all think that way because nobody's really dissected it in quite some of these different ways, but we're getting to that now. We have the science and technology to do that. There was a doctor in the 1800s that did an experiment that showed that if you changed the way light was exposed to plants, so that he took actually a glass plate and he blocked the light going to the plant, the plant wouldn't grow as well as if it was exposed to directly sunlight or to quartz crystal light. And that's because the glass actually blocks out some of the UV rays. So I'm mentioning this because that was in the 1800s and they've speculated what is that magic something that causes that to happen. 
It turns out that it's called biophotons, and it was confirmed by Dr. Fritz Albert Popp, who in the 1970s discovered conclusively that biophotons actually exist. Biophotons meaning light inside of your body, light inside of the cells. We also, he also uh, discovered or found that one of the mechanisms by, that this may be happening is these things called chromatids. Do you see these things right here? Do you see those little lights on the end? Those are the telomeres or telomerase. And they <coughs> are inside of your cells. I can't remember exactly what the number is, but it's like an astonishing number of them inside of each individual cell. And if they don't replicate properly, you're going to start aging. So, you know, you hear all the time light therapies are really good for rejuvenation. Well, it's possible that one of the reasons for that is because it charges up your telomerase and they actually reproduce more properly. Another thing that a lot of people wonder about is this thing called bioluminescence, which is something that is common in many different kinds of marine life, like there's different algaes that glow in the dark and what have you like that. So biologically, we see there's a precedence in nature for bioluminescence. It's just that in these type of organisms, it's a very predominant trait, whereas in humans, we don't see ourselves glowing Although you do fre frequently refer to somebody, you say, oh, you have a nice glow about you. You know, you seem a little dull today, you know, something like that. We actually do, in some ways, know that. And in fact, uh, one of the other things I'd like to comment on here is that when you blush, you're actually releasing thousands of biophotons. That flushing is releasing this gigantic amount of energy because it's a distress signal. So um, biophotons basically make up an, like an internet inside of your body, if you will. They definitely run up and down your DNA. And there's a little bit more to it than that. But uh, I just want to point out that there's those little things that we talked about that they were blue in that other slide right here, that end part right there is where the light comes out. Those are called chromatids. Chroma means light. Tid means small. The DNA has like a hundred or a, a thousand or more biophotons in every one of the cells inside of your body. And just to give you an example, there are probably about 900 quadrillion biophotons inside of you right this second going off. That includes your human and your non-human cells, which would include all the bacteria all the other things that you have inside of you because we are basically a, we have that symbiotic relationship between those things and without those relationships we wouldn't actually be able to to be alive or to process our food. So when the light comes into the skin, different frequencies of light penetrate the skin to different different depths. So I'm sure all of you know that if you go out in the sun you're going to get sunburned and that if you use sunscreen, it blocks out certain parts of the light. But what they found recently is that, as an example, one of the reasons why skin cancers have become more prevalent, potentially, this is a potential reason, by the way, is that those sunblocks only block out UVB. So the UVA, you're getting a lot more exposure to UVA than you normally would. Your body's natural signaling mechanism is burning. I'm getting too hot. I'm getting a sunburn. I need to go inside. I need to cover up. But without that natural signaling, we stay out longer than we should, and we do get the UVA, which then starts to cause cellular damage. So uh, as you can see here, the UV in the 400 nanometer range, which is one of our wands, has that capability penetrates very deeply. It has some very profound effects on the body if used properly and in the correct dosages. Uh, some of the other frequencies, this is a 600, very deep, 1,000, 1,400. So these are the layers of the skin. You can really get deep. And in fact, Ronnie, you also talked about in your presentation that there's a difference between the 
type of energy and that the red end of the spectrum it's more thermal so you're actually going to feel that one whereas you probably don't feel the other ones because they're at the cool end of the spectrum. That's another reason why you're going to burn if you get too much sun. Um, your skin is your largest organ. How many people know that? Okay, we know the skin is the largest organ. What we don't realize is that we're photosynthesizing all the time, if you will, because our skin is absorbing light all the time. The light in this room is probably not the kind of light that our body really needs. So, you know, people that spend most of their time inside probably are developing what I would consider to be critical light deficiencies because they're especially these type of lights are absent in the yellow spectrum range. So you're in this light, you're not getting yellow light, you may be not getting some of the other ones. If you look in Dinshaw's book, the one that David has here, Let There Be Light, right inside the cover it actually has an excellent photo that shows you the differences between uh, full spectrum lights of different sorts and incandescents and things like that. So please take a look at that. It'll help educate you a little bit more there. Anyway, one of the things that regular science says is that with the right type of sunlight, full spectrum sunlight, you're going to get vitamin D production in your skin and that plays a gigantic role in everything from tumor suppression to creating your calcium in your body to bone health and things like that. Uh, that light is also absorbed through the skin, the eyes, um, we ingest it in the form of plants as we already talked about. The, the skin cells, I hope I can kind of make this clear because I wasn't sure I made this very clear but I before. This gentleman right here used to work for the Linus Pauling Institute in California, which is where all the primary research on vitamin C was done. He discovered that your skin cells actually are like this. They're sort of three-dimensional cubes, if you will, or what would you call this shape right here? A tesseract, something like that. Um, anyway, that's how your body uses to enclose all these bendable shapes that we have as, as people and as our skin moves. Well, each one of those is sort of like a solar collector. The light goes in there, it's refracted in different ways, and you are basically like a hologram on the inside. So it's not just the DNA, you are a hologram on the inside. So have you ever heard that if you burn your finger, your body moves your finger out of the way of the path of pain before your brain can even know it's happened? You've heard that before, right? How does that happen? Because it's not a chemical reaction. It's actually because of that. We are a holograph. As soon as that happens to that, it's happening in the whole body. The whole body experiences that and knows what to do because we have intelligence throughout the whole system. So this guy, when he worked for the Linus Pauling Institute, he came up with this idea. It's called quasi-crystals. They're kind of liquid crystals. This is also some of the technology that's behind liquid crystal displays in our computers and things like that. There's a lot of applications for it. Anyway, he was fired by the Linus Pauling Institute because they said, you are crazy. There is no way that that happens. He went to all these different places and he tried to get support for his ideas. And finally, somebody in the Washington, D.C. finally said, okay, let's check this out and validate it. And then he finally won a Nobel Prize, but not before he had to move to Israel to get that done. <laughs> so. I mean, you know, is that sad? Here he is, a brilliant scientist in one of the most prestigious uh, research institutes in the world, the Linus Pauling Institute, which they themselves won two Nobel Prizes for their incredible research. They still weren't open-minded enough to get this, and yet this is changing the world. So um, another person that's changing the world is this lady, Mei Wan Ho. Mei Wan Ho is a PhD biophysicist. She lives in, uh, I believe, the Hong Kong. She uh, was studying organisms, and I don't know if you know this or not, but most of the time when you study microorganisms in school, they're dead. 
they have to be killed before they can be put under a microscope. So there's no every everything we know is from studying dead things, corpses, <laughs> dead flowers, things like that. I know this is my mother is a botanist, by the way. She gets those plants and she squishes them in a book before she looks at them, you know. So anyway, Mei Wan Ho had this idea that if she could only study a living organism and see what it truly looked like under a microscope, that she would find something really amazing. And it turns out that they use these type of microscopes in the mining industry to look at rocks for some reason. I don't know why, but it's called a polarizing microscope. She used that microscope to look at this fruit fly larva, which is called the rainbow worm, this one right here. And do you see all that color? Okay, that is the first time ever anybody has actually ever seen a living organism like that under a microscope. And that color, she postulates, it was representing different types of functions inside of that organism. So not only are we seeing the living organism, we're seeing the functions. So possibly that green in there could be its digestive mechanism. That yellow could be you know, some other thing. The blue is probably oxygen of some sort or water. The red is probably doing some kind of nitrogen type thing in the body. So, you know, the, these are just ideas. And this is another organism. And you can see these almost like rivers of light running through the organism. You never saw that before because until she figured out to use this type of microscope, no one had ever seen this. So, in living color, right? as we like to say. Um, she said that the reason why those living things do that is because of this, the, the crystalline structure that I was talking to you about before. The light is running all through that. As soon as that thing is killed, all the biophotons go out. They, you know, out like a light, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you don't see them in dead things because they're not there. That's partly what causes you to be dead. You don't have the ability to have biophotons anymore or retain them. So, of course, that should give you a hint that if you're starting to get run down, what do you need? Biophotons, right? You're running out of biophotons. That's why they regenerate. So, um, it turns out, Fritz Albert Pop discovered this, that healthy cells transmit and uh, absorb the same frequency of light. So if it's a cell that likes stuff in the green range, it's going to absorb and transmit those things in the 500 nanometer range. Unhealthy cells absorb light in one frequency range, but they transmit out scrambled light. So it, let's say it's absorbing a 500 nanometer light frequency, but it's putting out a 300 nanometer or 380 nanometer light uh, to the surrounding area. That's sort of like polluting, if you will, the, the environment. And that's one of the ways that bad health kind of gets spread out in the body. So um, once a cell becomes injured, we talked about this a second ago, it sends out a flare. The flare is that red. You know, you see that red? Oh, oh, I hurt myself. Okay, if I'm blushing, oh, I'm embarrassed, you know, it's not just for pain, it's also, it's a distress signal, basically, that our body makes. Um, it's transmitted throughout the entire body, so inside our body is what we call coherent. Things are coherent. When they're incoherent, you know, I'll know this, okay, if you're incoherent, you're what? Crazy, right? So lack of coherence, your cells are going crazy, right? If you're coherent, you're right on track. You know this from other ways. So does everybody see that finger of that person right there, right here? What do you think that is? Take a guess. This is a biophoton picture that was taken by some Japanese people. The, the reason why that person's finger is putting out a distress signal right here, you see it's red, then it's yellow, it should be blue and cool, but it's not. It's that person smokes holding the cigarette. 
start starting to get possibly getting cancer on their finger from that possibly uh, so I just wanted to sh show you that now Fritz Albert Pop discovered also that 380 nanometer light is what cancer cells transmit out and so this is another thing that's very strange about how our body works it's not well understood but there's something called the photo repair mechanism the body uses to repair itself so some of you know that there's something called photofacial where you can go and get like light therapy for your skin and it makes you look pretty and all that and gets rid of wrinkles and scars and what have you it uses the photo repair mechanism to do that and it stimulates the cells to regenerate and it actually regenerates the DNA inside the cell it turns out that, that if you irradiate the cell with the right frequency of light it will actually kick it back on it kind of kick starts it if you will so that's just a little bit of information there on that um, okay this may be stepping out a little bit but I think we need to talk about it your body is 99.9% .9 water on the inside you'll hear people say oh your body's like 70% water but it's not really true you're more than that because inside of every one of your cells is water so you're basically a skin filled with water <laughs> mechanism so uh, water has this amazing ability to have light go through it and um, it also some people say that water has the ability to hold consciousness and or intelligence and that I think Dr. Vaughn will speak about possibly in a little bit is the premise behind homeopathy for instance that the water has a memory it can be programmed it can actually be charged up in fact you know this may be one of the mechanisms behind energy healing and some of the other things and certainly behind homeopathy uh, with our process with the, the light is actually charging up the water inside the cells and bringing it and allowing it to create these frequencies then have a resonance with throughout the rest of the body how that works is that that's the intelligence that's the consciousness that we're that, that we interact with on a daily basis so you know your health basically the quality of the water inside your body that's why you need to detox and keep your body clean and eat clean foods and things like that you need the light to charge that water up because if you know if you just have water and it becomes stagnant or still you know it becomes stale and it starts to die well how do you charge it back up with light how do you get it to be healthy again with light so and of course the the whole process that underlies that there's the architecture there is that consciousness um, water basically has just recently been found to have four phases which I was shocked at because I know when I was in school we only knew about the liquid solid gas state and those had to do with the temperatures of the water but it turns out that scientists have recently discovered and I forgot to bring the book with me today but it's called the fourth phase of water if you want to look it up it was done by the University of Wisconsin a lot of research into that water can be solid at room temperature I know that sounds hard to believe but it's true and inside your cells it looks like or inside your body it looks like this now the thing I found fascinating about that was that the Chinese have always said that the meridians which is the energy that flows throughout the body was a physical thing but it doesn't have like arteries and veins and capillaries or anything like that so it was never be able to be found out how they actually work well it turns out now we know the meridians are made out of structured water inside the body so when your meridians are blocked one of the things that we can do is use the water I mean use our light to charge your system back up and your meridians will start to reform is that cool or what you know 
So, I mean, again, your body is just so intelligently designed and so perfectly structured so that it can be self-healing. If you could only understand its language, you would be able to work with it and really be able to have profound uh, effects, you know, on everything from a physical ailment to a mental thing to a, you know, to a, uh, an emotional thing. I believe that you can heal all of that knowing this type of information. By the way, this, these little droplets, if you will, are, look like ice crystals actually under a microscope. They have a negative charge. So uh, this is also something I think is really important for people to keep in mind. You need a preponderance of negatively charged ions in the body to be healthy. The Swiss discovered that when the winds come out of the Alps, it brings a ton of positively charged ions into the area, and it's so bad that they cannot do surgery when that happens because people will bleed to death. That's how important this is. So um, that, that's from a book called The Ion Effect. Also, people that are prone to a lot of headaches may notice that when it's windier, it's not just the dust particles. The wind brings all these positively charged ions, and that causes us to be unhealthy. So the, the light actually adds negative ions to the system, so that's one of the reasons why it's so beneficial. Uh, by the way, another thing I think is so fascinating about the Chinese and why I love the study of Chinese medicine is that the Qigong masters from ancient times, they said, there's ice in the body. And people would say, ice in the body? Well, that's impossible. These guys are crazy, right? But they were talking about this, room temperature ice. And it's a fact. Thanks for uh, not just electron microscopes. The microscopes that are even more finely attuned than that are called, um, so I can't remember the name of them, but it's a new type of microscope. There's only a few of them in the world. This particular picture was taken at Caltech and uh, with one of those microscopes. I think there's like five of them in the United States. So what is the role of color in all of this? Well, we talked about this already. Neonatal jaundice was found to be able to be helped significantly by blue light therapy. Um, red, we know, is a color is you know, warming, and it also uh, helps with inflammation, things like that. Yellow is kind of an exciting color, so if you don't want to go all the way to the heat, you just want to get something a little bit rubbed up, you might want to use yellow or amber light. Blue is cooling and refreshing, and it also oxygenates the blood and the cells. Uh, dark colors actually help to pull things down even another level beyond the blue, so very, very um, calming or sedating. And then the green is actually supposed to be neutral and grounding, but one of the things that we learned from Dr. Vaughn, and he's going to talk about this in a little bit, is that after you do a light therapy treatment with a client, a lot of times you'll have experienced sort of an aggravation, meaning that their system will feel a little bit revved up. If you'll finish that treatment with a green light therapy afterwards, you'll find that that person's system will accept the treatment and calm down significantly. And so it's a very nice combination. So um, neonatal jaundice is the first picture. The second picture, I'm sure you've heard about this thing called seasonal <coughs> effectiveness disorder. It also works for other types of mood disorders. It's just a different color of blue light than the one that's actually used in the neonatal jaundice. I believe the neonatal jaundice one is more of a blue-green or a turquoise type of light, whereas this is more of a true blue. NASA discovered when the astronauts were in outer space, they were using red and blue light to grow plants, which David is really familiar with this, uh, and it was having a really good effect on the astronauts. So <laughs> they were like, wow, what's that all about? And so they started studying it and they found out that certain colors of red and blue light actually are even good for skin cancers, and now NASA is really big in studying this particular phenomenon. So. Um, Light therapy does have deep roots. Color therapy has deep roots, as Rhonda was great at explaining all of that to us a little while ago. You know, we know the Egyptians used light therapy. We know the Chinese used light therapy. And the Ayurvedic people, the, the Indian people, they used light therapy. I love what they did. They would take silk and soak it in different kinds of berry juices and different kinds of substances 
and wrap the person up with these colors and actually that would actually help the person before you know we had the kind of lights we have today which are phenomenal. Um, modern light therapy really got started with Feinson. Feinson was an MD who won the Nobel Prize in 1903. Again Rhonda I thought you did a great job of explaining how there was a lot of activity around this in the early 1900s, but then with the advent of the AMA in the 40s, a lot of suppression, and it's just now starting to come back around for us to look at. Anyway, the reason why he won the Nobel Prize is because he cured people of smallpox, tuberculosis, lupus, and not only did he cure people of smallpox, the red disfiguring scars that the person had would also be cured. Now, another thing that I was very impressed with is that, I don't know if you can really see this slide right here, but I'm trying to try to point it out to you. Do you see how this little girl's spine is very just warm right here? Twilight. Yes, sir. When you step away, they can't hear you. Oh, I'm so sorry. So you have to explain all that by your words. I'm sorry. Okay, excuse me. Um, so, uh, if you see this picture of this little girl on the slide, she has a type of tuberculosis of the spine that causes severe disfigurement. She was treated for 18 months with red light therapy in a Swiss hospital in the 1900s, early 1900s. As you can see, after 18 months, she had absolutely no disfigurement. She no longer had the disease. And I don't think that we can do that today. I mean, you know, when people have these kind of problems, you might be able to get rid of the disease, but how many people do you know that if they have some kind of like scoliosis, do they ever get rid of it? There is a theory floating around that says that if you have the antibodies for TB or polio or some of these other things, you may have scoliosis because your body's reacting to that. Not as severely as this, so not suggesting that we don't use those vaccines, but what I am suggesting is that you might use light therapy to help correct that for people and what a benefit and relief that would be for people. And I think we can do it with what we have. Denshaw, who was another person that Rhonda talked about, he successfully treated over 400 different kinds of diseases in that book. I really highly encourage everyone to purchase it because it's like a recipe book of light therapy. It just helps you to understand. He only had 12 colors that he worked with and you can see him on that color wheel there. He postulated that one of the reasons why light therapy worked is because of what I talked about earlier that the actual elements from the periodic table all have the very specific colors in that as a doctor in the old days they compounded their own formula so he knew oh this person needs sulfur, that person needs carbon, that person needs nitrogen, whatever. So he just gave it to him with light, and it worked. And you heard Kate Baldwin talking about how profound and gentle it was. So this next slide, when you see this foot with this little colored light here, this is actually called color puncture, where they use very specific frequencies of light on the acupuncture points, which I was trying to make the point of earlier are made out of structured water which responds as I also tried to make the point to water is a fantastic conductor of light so you can actually treat the whole body through the acupuncture points with colored light and we have wands to do that. We also have paddles for direct application for bigger things. So this is pretty profound if you really want to think about it. Okay, and also I really want to stress to people that you don't really get, until you see things like this, how much of a healing a person can get. I mean, if we can help a little person like that, I'm not saying we did that, but if that can happen, what can we do for people? I mean, that's very telling. Okay, so I um, also like this picture because it helps you to understand that everything has biophotons in it. They use Korean photography in other countries for diagnostics, even though we don't use it here in the United States, really. You can see that mushroom on the top up there that's like a plasma ball. That is an organic mushroom. The conventional one you can see doesn't have much biophotonic activity, so what does that tell you? Organic food is probably better for you. 
because where do we get a lot of our biophotons from what we eat? Cooked food versus raw food. It's the next slide. Down here, I thought this one was really interesting. This was a slide I know David really liked was that leaf. This leaf, they were picked it, they cut the tip of it off, and took this picture within 15 minutes of cutting the leaf in, in two. And you can see that in the Carolian photography, the plant is just starting to notice that the tip is missing. But that, that sort of explains that, vote, that phantom limb phenomenon and things like that. And um, some people use the Carolian photography for diagnostics. And how they do it is they you put your fingertips and your toe tips on a photonic plate. It takes a picture of it. And then once you know how to read those, you can say, oh, this is that meridian, or it's this type of energy block, and this, you know, because the fingers all respond to the, or correspond to the organs and what have you. Um, so health benefits of light, vitamin D synthesis, regulating your circadian rhythms, which keeps you in harmony with the earth. So another thing I was thinking about with this, and this might resonate with a few of you, is that how many do you see your kids more and more and more? They stay up all night and they sleep all day. They're under fluorescent lights all the time, and they're in front of the computer all the time. Their biorhythms are just getting hammered with that, those frequencies of light, and they're completely out of sync with what, you know, with our planet and with what's really going on here. And that's got to have long-term adverse effects on their health. Uh, you have to have a, the right kind of light to have DNA repair your cells. So the old timey naturopaths would tell people you need 15 minutes of sunlight a day, preferably early in the morning because that's when the rays of the light are not so burning and what have you. Uh, you know, I used to eschew that because I'm so fair that if I go outside for very long I get sunburned, but I think that even myself will finally become one over to that point of view. Uh, your Photo repair mechanism, it doesn't just repair your skin, it's also for your blood, your bones, your spine, your brain, for your mood, for all kinds of things. It's definitely rejuvenating. <clears throat> Light helps to restore your hormone balance. It helps with emotions like the seasonal affectiveness disorder. It's also being used effectively for things that are a lot worse, like Alzheimer's disease, for instance, and things like that. So psychological. And because we were talking about that intelligence, consciousness factor, of course, we think there's profound effects on a spiritual level for people as well with the light therapy. Uh, so sunbathing, 15 minutes a day in the sun and or the exposure to the right colors of light with the spectra bright. Um, eat you know, high quality fresh organic foods because they can absorb and transmit those lights better to us. Uh, possibly consume structured water or helix water. Uh, be sure you detox. You need minerals so that your body can be healthy and those and the water can actually transmit the things that it needs to transmit with those minerals. And of course your consciousness. So you know think of yourself as a little solar cell, you know, absorbing and receiving the light. Um, I think this, I know I said this before when you came to our previous lecture, that this maybe seems like a weird slide, but it's so important to me because that's what most people look like on the inside. If your cells are looking through a dirty window, the water inside your body is filthy because you eat a lot of fast foods, high fat, don't detox, don't eliminate properly you're going to be sick. That's just all there is to it because the light can't go anywhere. It's just trapped and it's, and it's not, it's uh, polluted. So, you know, you have a poor internal environment, you're going to be sick, you need to do something about that. Artificial light is a big problem. And if you don't try to get more natural light, full spectrum light, you're definitely going to have some problems down the road. Um, so we need quality biophotons to, to make our, our life work and, of course, a clean environment. Light can be used for lots of applications, uh, scar reduction, infections, hormone balancing, wound therapy. In fact, we have a program in the Spectrum Right that's specific for wound therapy. 
a traumatic brain injury. I have a client right now that I'm treating for traumatic brain injury and having phenomenal results even though that injury happened years ago. We've actually even seen people that um, were quadriplegic, paraplegic start to have some rejuvenations even many years down the road. So if you know people like that, maybe you want to help introduce them to this because you can help improve the quality of their life. Uh, it's good for soft and hard tissues, uh, swelling. Joe's wife recently was came to me and I was actually able to treat her for edema in the ankle and also some low back pain that she had. Um, you can use it for periodontal diseases, you know, cranial stimulation, acupoint. I mean, this, this is a tiny list, hardly any, uh, not inclusive of all the things you can do. I especially like the UV wand for a lot of things like that because I'm having such good results with that one for people. Um, so one of the things I need to stress to you, we talked about this, sunlight does not go through glass. You think you're getting sunlight because you sit close to a window, forget it, you're not getting enough of the right things. Um, you do need to be careful to avoid, avoid burns. You know, in the old days, they only had candles. They did still use the lenses with the candlelight, and it did help the colored lenses. Um, these special frequency incandescent lights can be beneficial if they have the, enough of the spectrum of the color in it. But our LEDs are really good because they provide direct surface contact, very bright, they're cool so you can leave them on the skin for a good length of time which makes them more effective and they're very versatile. Our product, the SpectraBright, can make 16 million colors so I always say there's like 16 million ways to get well using that and uh, it's very good quality light. Laser light however is the most coherent the only downside with it is it's really too hot for most to leave it on very long so Overall, you know, you're probably going to get your best results with LED and possibly laser. Um, I talked about rejuvenation. A doctor right here in Oklahoma City gets $500 per treatment for this. <laughs> so we can do this with our SpectraBright. How many of those kind of treatments at $500 do you think it would take to pay that thing off? Not that we'd get that, but I'm just pointing this out. This was on a <laughs> you know, KOCO TV website. And it just tells you, like, you know, what they use the different colors of light for. But basically, uh, you know, wrinkle reduction, scar reduction, sag reduction, uh, pigmentation problems, all kinds of things like that. So, uh, pretty cool, huh? I'd like to have that business. <laughs> <laughs> Another person that I thought this was really amazing. This guy was an athlete, 18 years old, dove into a lake broke his neck and became paralyzed. Um, he was in the hospital for several months when they started using uh, red light therapy on him and he finally started getting nerve regeneration from just after a few treatments so he was already able to move his fingers and we can only speculate that he'll continue to benefit from that. Uh, advanced thought here, biophotons, maybe consciousness, so you know, maybe light is conscious. Um, consciousness may be enhanced by biophoton therapy. Nobody really knows for sure whether the DNA and those chromatids are the only way that the body transmits light, but we know they do transmit light in the body. So even though we don't exactly know all of the mechanisms for it, we believe that those are part of the mechanisms. So you know, I talked about the actual skin itself as being important in that. Another point that I like to make about the skin here is that um, how many of you know vitamin C is extremely important in your skin health? If you know that, it's sort of interesting to think about the way consciousness might work in that vitamin C comes from what? Sun fruits, citrus, you know? Isn't that kind of an amazing thing when you think about it? <laughs> you know, I mean, it just comes full circle. I, I love that kind of thing. So a lot of poetry in that. Um, so light is life. Without light, we don't have life. 
it's just a fact. I mean, you have in quality light, the better the quality, the better you're going to be. And bio, bio photons are an indisputable biological fact. It has been proven, even though in the United States, you're not going to find too many doctors that are going to sign up for that. But you know, in the rest of the world, where they don't have the AMA, it is a fact. So, <laughs> uh, cells transmit and absorb light. Healthy cells transmit and absorb the same frequencies of light. Unhealthy cells absorb good light and spit out bad light. Um, the, uh, let's see. Different frequencies of light have different properties for healing. So that's why, you know, if you need blue light, you're probably needing oxygen or other things. I don't want you to think that oxygen is the only thing that comes from blue light. I'm just using that as an example. But, uh, or helium is a heating, for instance, and hydrogen. Uh, heat, heat. Okay, hydrogen is red and it's heating. And of course, you know, we get a lot of the ideas about hydrogen being used to, you know, for fuel and things like that. Well, maybe our body uses it for fuel too. You ever think about that? Um, so, biophotons, we absorb them from our food, water, light, air, exposure. Um, any type of stress leads to disharmony, which causes disease and eventually death. So you want to make sure that you pay attention to those things. For uh, further research and study, you might want to check out uh, any works that you can find on the internet for, about Dr. Fritz Albert Pop. He has no works in English published right now. They're looking into publishing one of his books in English, but uh, there's some excerpts about it. And he's a German, I believe. And uh, he, his son has a few lectures online that you can find if you just go onto uh, YouTube. They have subtitles so that you can actually read them. Uh, the Feinson's work, definitely should check that out. The pictures that you will see will astound you. Also, the Dinshaw material, that picture of that little girl that was burned over the gigantic percentage of her body, healed with no scarring, and you know, that is a big thing right there. Can you imagine? Uh, these two guys, which I can't even read their names, but those guys, the Samina Youssef, whatever, and Raza, they actually have a paper published on the National Institute of Health's website, which I think is really amazing because they refuse to publish these kinds of things usually. And it was like, what was it, about 160 pages, David, or something like that? We read that one. I highly recommend that you read that. They did a study to discover whether there was any benefit to the folklore around color therapies throughout the world and they found a tremendous amount of research on that. So of course Google and Wikipedia, even though right now I'm having a personal war with Wikipedia over them slamming homeopathy, they said it was a blatant fraud, which we know that's not true. So uh, anyway, so you might want to boy boycott them for the moment. But anyway, uh, biophotons are just your body's way of synthesizing light and it's your your body is basically you know part of the quantum physics world and you know you may not think of it that way but that's one of the reasons why we're so remarkable um, so we're all being beings of light so I'm going to encourage everyone to go out and get some sunshine or some light <laughs> All right. I, I hope you found that as interesting as I did. This is my second time to hear that presentation, and there's so much material. When you think about all that Rhonda shared about the history of light therapy, how long it's been around, how many people have used it, how much research was done, the price they paid. Now you look at how science is catching up to what these people knew instinctively these many years ago. Now we're starting to have the evidence and hard science behind therapies that are beneficial to people. Uh, but I want to remind you, for those of you watching us via the internet, that uh, while we are trying to educate, that's the main purpose of what we're doing here, 
we're not intending to give false hope. We're not intending to diagnose. Uh, we're just letting you know that there are many, many people who are finding benefits of frequencies and pulsing of light therapy. So in the sessions that will follow after the lunch break, we're going to do a brief uh, walkthrough of our device, start to share with you some of the stories that we have been given from people who are using the device. And uh, Dr. Baum will give a brief presentation on what he's experienced in his own life and work. Uh, because trying to move this forward, we, as you can imagine, it's a landmine of delicacies here that we have to tiptoe through. Uh, but if we do it correctly, the thing that we all desire to happen, and that's to see people helped and be healthy. And it doesn't appear to me that it is nearly as difficult as the medical community may want us to believe. <laughs> that uh, God really was a little smarter than many people give him credit for when he built the universe. So um, after lunch, we'll be going into some of that information. We'll break for about an hour and a half because uh, restaurants are a little far from here. For those of you who are watching the internet, about one 15, we will reconvene. That's central time in Oklahoma. You can figure that out. That's an hour and 35 minutes from now. <clears throat> and we'd love to have you back for those afternoon sessions when you'll get to see some more hands-on practical stories that we have been given that you'll find quite fascinating. All right, we'll see you then.
Okay, welcome back. I want to take a few minutes uh, before Dr. Vaughn comes to just introduce the equipment because many of you overseas have never seen this before. Um, and again, I want to just restate that uh, we have our first unit in the Philippines today, and I hope that they're on, I think they are, on viewing and getting training because of the typhoon victims. We're treating a lot of issues there very easily and very quickly that we couldn't do here. And they're going to study and give us data back. One of the things we're addressing is hepatitis C, uh, which we've had good response here, and they're going to be testing it because they have a lot of it there. Okay, uh, the SpectraBright unit sitting right here. I don't know how this is going to come across on the camera, so if your computer freaks out on the other end, uh, I apologize in advance because you're going to see that the lights are very bright. Uh, that's why we do recommend and we include eye protective eyewear in all of our units. Uh, it doesn't affect everyone's eyes, but for safety's sake, we, we strongly recommend that everyone use their protective eye care. Uh, for the sake of this demonstration, we won't be able to because I want to see how it looks on the camera. But um, SpectraBright uh, is, has an Arduino processor in it. Uh, we have 11 priority programs, our own programs proprietary that we've put in. Uh, the thing that we have that others do not have is the pulsing frequencies. Uh, I've heard this. I think it is the truth. I've looked it up once, but I haven't had time to research it completely. I think that they put a pulsing mechanism on the space shuttle to match the Earth's uh, resonant frequency which is 7.83 hertz or 7.83 pulses per second because your heart is in tune with the Earth's frequency. So our very first frequency we put in was 7.83 hertz. And then we have others that step all the way up to 29.6 and then step back down, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, and then there are many other frequencies, including some solfeggio frequencies, Schumann frequencies, so on, that are in these different programs. Another feature of the device is that, as with many programmable uh, devices, if there is an upgrade to the program, you just have to send the unit in, get it upgraded, send it back. But we have a port on the side of our unit that you'll be able to upload any new programming from your own computer at home. Uh, so you don't have to send the unit back to us, which is really nice if you're in the Philippines. <laughs> and we have a new program that we find that works really well, and we want to give it to you. All you have to do is log on to the website and download the new program package, which is kind of nice. Uh, as I said, there are almost an infinite number of color combinations. Twyla says 16 million. I've never tried that. <laughs> But, uh, but we have, with our manual program, we've been able to dial many different uh, combinations and hues and textures of frequencies. Um, the standard, when you turn the unit on, the standard default setting is Tesla. Uh, Tesla did a lot of research in frequency uh, energies. And so we used his pulses from 7.83 up to the 29 point something and back. There's seven total frequencies in there. Um, so let me just turn it on. I believe it is this button right here. Yes. What's that look like? It's fine. Is it all right? It's all right. It's a little freaky to me, but let me just give you a little flash here. You can see that's really bright. So I'll keep it down. But that's 7.83 pulses per second, and it does red, blue, red, blue. So you're getting both colors. Uh, it appears to be a little bit magenta. If we left it on solid, it would be. But you're getting the red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. And we'll explain in just a few minutes why we've done that. So let me turn that one off. And then the wands that come are different colors. So any program in the device that has blue in it will run this wand. Any program that has red in it will run this one. So if you're running Tesla on this one, it will just pulse blue. If you're running Tesla on this one, it will just pulse red. This, this tells you what it is. This one is an RGB, and I think I have that plugged in here. Mm. Yes. Wow. Okay. Any program that will run on the light pads will run on this one because it has an RGB. You can see it's flashing red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. If I were to put that on a green, it would work. If I had it on aqua, it would work because this will handle any of the colors. 
The others will only work on the color. One, two. You see this one, barely visible. This is UV because we're on the lower edge of visible light. This runs from about 385 nanometers to 405 nanometers. And I just saw online the other day, there's a device that <laughs> they say it's 3,000 hour life expectancy. This is 100,000 hours. 3,000 hour life expectancy, and it costs $1,500 for, for this. Well, you don't pay near that for this one. Anyway, and then, let me find the other one. No, no. Oh, there it is. And then this is red. Now you can see that that, I'm going to flash it at you. That red is, do you get it bright? Yeah. It's pretty bright. Um, one of the things that we're going to be researching in the next few months is using this intranasally. Uh, I'll stick it up here and light me up like Pinocchio, uh, Rudolph. Um, but this will get into the brain, and we're doing some research in pituitary and uh, pineal st stimulation, which I think is going to be really exciting. So uh, you can see that there's versatility built into the device, and you can make all of these ports run on one program. You can run four different programs at one time, as you can see. So you can treat one person four places or four people one place, and back and forth. Uh, but the diversity that's built in, I'm, uh, as what Twyla said, we're really excited about the UV because UV with amber, which we have in the back, uh, has a really nice detoxifying effect on the blood. It will kill pathogen, pathogenic agents in the blood. So uh, I know there will be questions about this as we go along, but I wanted you just to see basically what the unit is, what it looks like, what it does, and uh, we'll get into some more of the testimonials in just a little bit. Okay, so let me, I'm gonna set this off a bit without breaking anything. Okay, so at least now you know what it looks like. So when we're talking about these different color applications, oh, and one thing also that may or may not be well known, we have been able, with Kevin's help, get me back in the frame there. Yeah. Uh, we have been able, with Kevin's help, to program healing affirmations into the light frequency. Now, you say, well, how is that possible? When you make a phone call on a landline, how does your voice get to the person on the other end? It goes through a fiber optic cable where your voice is digitized and is carried on a light signal to the other end where it is uncoded and becomes sound. And it is so perfect in the uncoding, the decoding, that you recognize people's voices on the phone. Many times they don't have to say who it is. You know who it is because you recognize their voice. It's that accurate. Imagine taking positive healing affirmations, and we selected 42 scriptures from the Bible that are all healing scriptures. We put them into a program, and we've attached it to the spectra bright, so you can get it with or without. We know that healing scriptures might offend some people. We understand that. Uh, the device works very well without them, but we have discovered that it seems to work better with them. So it's your choice. If it's put it in all of them. Well, we could put it in all of them, but we're not going to because we don't want to okay. take advantage or offend some people that it might affect. But it's there if you want it. It's a very slight upcharge. You can talk to your dealer about that. But uh, it does work. And um, that probably, over time, is something we're going to explore even more. But we'll let you know as it develops. But for right now, it certainly is a very exciting discovery for us. Uh, we have already built into the device a circuit that will allow us to take an audio file that you choose, and we can plug it into the device, and you can listen to Beethoven, and it will be digitized into the pulses of the light. We can do that with 
a worship chorus. We can do it with a, your favorite poem. <laughs> Thing, things that are soothing and calming and beneficial to you can be put not only audibly through a headphone, but digitally carried on the light pulse. And all I can tell you is it seems to help considerably. I'll just leave it at that for the moment. So you can get it with or without it. We don't want to offend you, but we'd sure like to make you better, and we found that the scripture seems to work better. Okay. Uh, I believe that covers the basics of the unit. For those of you who are just getting introduced to all this, our website has training on how to go through all of the programming of the device. It's already there on uh, our website, Millennial Health Systems at YouTube. Um, if, and there will be, by the way, now that we know we can do this, we will probably have monthly um, training sessions from our office. In the evening, we'll just log in. Throw the camera on. Anybody that wants to participate can. There will also be um, a questionnaire test available through American Institute of Light Therapy. It's AIOLT.com. AIOLT.com. It's an informational website that we've put up. And there will be a certification test there so you can be certified as having basic light therapy training. You get be certificate for that and everything. Um, I believe that covers the basics on the unit. I'm going to have Dr. Vaughn come. Interesting gentleman, Dr. Vaughn uh, was a Marine. Oh, Army. Army, sorry. Served in the Medical Corps. I saw medical and my brain said Marine. <laughs> Served in the Medical Corps as a combat medic in Vietnam. He's uh, practiced in Prague, Oklahoma for seven years. You were born in Berlin, Berlin lived in Turkey, Turkey. <laughs> and he's decided to reside in Prague, Oklahoma. Well, he'll have to tell that and have why that happened. But anyway, he's nationally board certified the American Association of Integrated Medicine. He's a graduate of the British Institute of Homeopathy and received a doctorate of homeopathy and medicine from the International University. Um, he uh, has held an associate professor position at the Ar University of Arkansas in math and science department. He's approved by the state of Oklahoma to teach homeopathy and owns the state approved curriculum for that study, has the largest homeopathic pharmacy in the state and has a great interest in light therapy and is very familiar with our equipment. So I'll give you Dr. Stephen Bond. Good afternoon. And to those of you that are about the world, good afternoon. I don't know what time it is there. Well, today has really been kind of exciting. I hope you're in awe like I am. Every time I get to see the, the presentations that come from both Rhonda and Twilight, I learn something new. And I, I thought that I had gone through all the same literature that they did, but they can sure put it out better. So now that you know where it came from, what light therapy and laser therapy can do for you, and you've had a chance to take a look at the box, let's talk about where it's been applied, at least in my office, my experience over the last couple of years with it. And so I've broken things down into different categories, and I want to start with the wounds first. And I've broken the wounds down to closed wounds as well as then open wounds. In the closed wounds where we have bruising, the SpectraBrite is extremely effective in helping to diffuse the, that blood that is, has uh, oozed into the interstitial space. Uh, and that pooling, of course, can cause edema, especially if you're looking in the lower extremities. Uh, and, and it does need to be diffused to help the patient recover a lot faster. So the warmth from the, the SpectraBrite paddles, although you don't really feel it, it's an energy source that's going on inside the body that helps to break this down. Post-surgical, I have had several patients come in that were post-surgical. It's usually something like they had a knee replaced, or they've had their hip worked on, or they've had the cervical spine worked on. They've got a lot of, of uh, post-operative pain. The SpectraBrite has been very, very effective. And most times I've used the number one setting, which is the Tesla setting, using the red and the blue, and I just let it run on the automatic service of the 14 minutes, and that brings uh, pretty quick relief. Joint or non-joint skeletal issues, 
the person that has a rotator cuff that's been repaired, uh, they have very, very limited range of motion. Well, with the SpectraBright, again, on the number one, the Tesla uh, position, we've been able to open up that range of motion. It seems that their healing time is about half the time than a patient that is not using light therapy. The need for pain medications is greatly reduced. I've had many patients that have gone from using um, oh, hydrocodone, oxycodone, uh, Tylenol-3 to where just using the Spectrobrite or using a light therapy type program, they've been able to put those uh, pain drugs away. In open wounds such as abrasions, I live in horse country and I love horses. I don't currently own any. I don't need to. Other people's horses bring me them as a patient. Uh, so I make a pretty good living because of other people's horses. <laughs> the horses have a mind of their own, so the patient gets tossed and they end up being torn up. And the Spectrobrite, as well as other protocols, have been extremely effective in helping to clean up the wound, knock down the chances of a secondary bacterial infection, which is easy to pick up out in the boonies out here. And the patient recovers so much faster. And we're doing it without medication. And to me, that's a biggie. I spent 22 years in the Army Medical Corps. I grew up using pharmaceuticals. And now, quite often, I don't use any at all. And if I do use uh, remedies that are already prepared, they're homeopathic, they're not allopathic, but I'm finding that using light therapy just really moves things along a whole lot faster. Lacerations. I love to work with lacerations and light therapy. When you can take somebody that oh, fell off of their John Deere tractor onto their barbed wire fence, and now they're a little bit torn up, and you can go back and heal that laceration in short order and you don't have the redness around the wound, you don't have drainage from the wound, that patient is healing up pretty quick. Some of these farmers that have been doing this all their life are now scratching their head wondering why didn't we do this years ago. But it's been very effective and that kind of word of mouth, trust me, goes from one farmer to another. Uh, punctures. Again, this is something we see more in the in the, uh, the rural areas than you're going to see inside of a metropolitan because we leave things like nails and old boards and so forth laying around and somebody steps on them or they fall on them. But again, light therapy kills the secondary uh, infection opportunities. The wounds heal up a whole lot faster. Skin. I love kids now that have acne and they have been to see the pediatrician or, or whatever physician who has put them on one medication or another and it works only to a point. You've got the, uh, the prom is coming up and they want to look their best and they come in to see me and within a couple of days we've pretty much taken care of the acne. And I have a niece who has very, very fair skin yeah, when she broke out with acne at age 16, which really wasn't too long ago, uh, she came crying to me and I said, don't worry about it. We treated her and within a couple of days you could hardly find any acne breakouts on her. Um, shingles. You hear, you hear a lot about shingles today. How many people in here have had the chicken pox vaccination, you know, years ago? How many people have had chicken pox? It's all the same virus. And the Spectrobrite is very effective, at least it's been in my office, in knocking down the pain of shingles. I've had patients come in and in one treatment, they're now pain free. Sometimes it takes two or three, but at least they're not on a continuing uh, uh, drug program. And they're very happy with it. Uh, most of the shingles are aggravated just because of the way clothing has to rub on it. Well, if you can knock down that pain, then that clothing rub isn't such a bad deal. Yes, sir? What program? Again, I was using number one Tesla. Okay. I like the number one Tesla because patients don't come in to me and say, well, I'm all healthy. I have no need to be here, but I thought I'd come in and see you and pay you my money. 
They come in because they have a pain. They have a wound. They have something that has brought them into me. And my job, as I see it, first thing is relieve them of the complaint. I hurt. Okay, I need to get rid of your hurt. Once I get rid of your hurt, then maybe I can go after the cause. And I'll get into that in just a minute. Um, herpes zoster, okay, you know, which goes right along with the, uh, uh, with the shingles. Uh, if you start, to, if your patients are complaining, I got a cold sore right here. You'd be surprised at how well the Spectrobrite works on that. It's incredible. Uh, boils and carbuncles. Now, when you have an embedded infection, and sometimes you just can't get it all, or somebody's treated it at home, and it's had an, a chance to encapsulate, it's closed over the top, they got it to drain for a little bit, and then it closed over, and now they have this fistful of purulence deep down inside, you're going to find that the spectrophrite is real effective in getting the energies back in there and starting to heal that. Again, Tesla, the red and the blue, that number one uh, frequency. Uh, poison ivy and poisonings. The number, or the, uh, the green is very effective uh, at this case. I would go to the manual setting and I would go to green and I would do green 9 to 11 minutes. So let me explain the green with the red uh, versus the red blue. If you come into me because you've torn up your knee, you're out playing golf, it was good, you take a, yeah, you hit the ball with that 9 iron and you twist your knee and I've been working on your knee with the number one Tesla to get the pain out, help bring the swelling down. Now it's time to heal that. The green frequency is a good healing frequency. So now that the pain is down, I'll switch you over and start the treatment using the green spectrum. And it's been very effective that way. Those three colors, red, blue, and green, have become my friend when I'm working with patients. The, all of the other mixed colors, they're fine, they have a purpose, uh, but you're going to find that the greens, the red, and the blue are going to be, be the ones that you use the most. Neuropathy. Nowadays we have a lot of people with peripheral neuropathy either because they are pre-diabetic, they're type 2 diabetic, what have you. By taking the, the you know, Spectrobrite pads and I, and, I, and I put them underneath the patient's feet, one pad under each foot, and I will set it for the, the automatic 14 minutes, number one, Tesla, and I will let it run its cycle, and then I will take the pads and put them on the top of the feet, and I will do that again. And I have had incredible success with removing the peripheral neuropathy uh, pain from the patient's feet. <coughs> Now, as a sidebar, I have a patient that lives over by Lake Eufaula that is being treated by the VA that was also 70% occluded in the left uh, carotid. After almost five months of treating him using the Spectrobrite, they did another ultrasound because it was time for the VA to do that. The left carotid occlusion was 40%. Can I say for certain that that had to do with the Spectrobrite? No, I can't. I don't know that for a fact. I know what he was treated with and what he was not treated with. So my conclusions lead me in that direction, but I won't hold that, that one to, uh, to anybody. Um, stress headaches. How many people in here get stress headaches? Okay, and I'm sure you folks across the globe get the same thing. Put the paddles right back here on the back of the neck. Go to the number one setting, Tesla, and let it run. You're going to find it'll do a tremendous amount of work relieving that. Most of the stress headaches run from just between the you know, shoulder blades right on up over the, the crown of the head. And if you just put those two paddles there and let them do their thing, the patient's going to say thank you very much within about 10 to, to 14 minutes. I don't know that I can recall that it never worked. Seizures. Now here's, here's an area that you have to be careful with. 
because pulse, pulsating red light can actually cause somebody that has epilepsy to go into a seizure, you certainly don't want them to see that light frequency pulsing at them. But that doesn't mean you can't use it on them. It means you can't have it to where they see it with the eyes. And I do have a patient that uh, has not only seizures, but she's also a Crohn's patient that I've been able to start introducing to using the, uh, the Tesla setting for a couple of her uh, musculoskeletal aches and pains. And so far, she's responding quite well. But I make darn sure that those lights are completely covered. She cannot see them at all. The, I have a high preponderance of patients that come in with low back pain and with sciatic pains. This is an ongoing thing, and sometimes that back pain is not so much a musculoskeletal as it is a kidney cavity issue. They've got the kidneys are pretty congested, and you'll I'll get into that in just a minute using the the paddles to try and, and help stimulate the, the kidneys. But for those that are coming in because they've got a bad back, they've had an old injury or they were out putting in new fence line and now they've overstressed their back. Again, just put it down. I, I go to the paraspinal muscles on each side of the lumbar uh, portion of the spine. And after I run a treatment on that, then I turn them horizontal to cover the sciatic nerves coming out from between L4 and L5. And that removes the pain that they have that comes out along the hip and then down the leg and pretty much terminates at the knee. That's a sciatic issue, and it's pretty easy to treat with the Spectre Bright. I've had very good luck with that. The shoulder pain, you can take one of the pads and put it in the front of the shoulder, right into the little pocket right there. Whether you want to use one paddle or two, I like to use two, but you put one right here. Have the patient lie down on the table, and you have one right behind the shoulder, and put the other one right here, then I put a drape across there so you don't have to sit there and have the, the, uh, the pulsating light bother you. Let it run its course. We had a gentleman that for about 10 years had a limited range of motion with his arm. He could get maybe 25, 30 degrees, and that was it. We treated him one time. He went out of the office doing this, and he wondered, how did we do that? Because all of the other physicians were saying, we need to take you to surgery, and we need to <coughs> loosen up that joint. Well, didn't need to do that. Um, again, I, I talked about the knees already. Yes, sir? Yes, ma'am? Was that the green for healing, or was that the No, that's red and blue. You betcha. Get that good energy in there. Mm -hmm. How many people in here are becoming arthritic? <laughs> okay. Spectrobrite is your friend especially if you're developing it in your fingers. Take the pad, put it down, uh, put your hand down on it, let it be right underneath your fingers, turn it on. You can take the other paddle, put it right over the top if you want, turn it on, just throw a small towel over it, you know, if you don't have the, the uh, goggles, and let it do its thing. Um, I had a lady, gosh, May of 2012, they came in with disfiguring arthritis in the phalanges or in the fingers. And she said, all I want to do, Dr. Vaughn, is to be able to open up a jam jar so I can spread some jam for my husband. He had not. He said, well, okay, let's see what we can do. And started working with light therapy. The you know, Spectrobrite came along and continued the work. Today her fingers are straight. She has full dexterity in, in all ten fingers. Okay, and to me this stuff is just cool. It really is, and it happens in short order. Um, Sinu, cartilages, tendons, and, and ligature. How many people in here know the word costochondritis? We have one nurse in here, and I'm sure all of you across the globe <laughs> know what I'm talking about. When you get a, a, an inflammation or a strain in the cartilages between the ribs, it's real difficult to breathe. 
And cartilage has very, very little, if any, blood vessels in it to help it repair. So how do you fix it? You can get, you can go a long way using the Spectrobrite. I've done it with my patients. And most of my patients that come in that have a costochondritis issue these days are the kids that are playing football or the person who just came back from military boot camp because they're not used to a 90 pound ruck on their back, a weapon in their hand and running, dodging and jumping uh, and doing push-ups with all of that, overstressing the rib cage and now they're hurting. And if you have not had that kind of pain, you don't know what it is. You cannot inhale, you cannot exhale, you can't stand, uh, stand sit, lie down, you cannot hide from that pain. And it can last moments or it can last days. And the Spectrobrite has been very effective with it. Um, Tesla? Yes, I went with the Tesla number one. I love that frequency. Um, so now let's talk about these these wands for a moment. If you address migraines, um, migraines. well, in my education, there's in our cancer repertory, there's 140 pages of headaches. So if you say I want to address migraines, tell me which one. Okay, okay I, it's not as simple as that, and I believe that 80% of all headaches begin in the gut. And so if there's something that is wrong down here, you're going to know about it up here. But head pain, we can talk about for a moment. Head pain, if it is because of stress, put the paddles here. If somebody, if that doesn't work and, and it's more of a, an organic issue, and somebody ate something wrong, now the hepatic system is out of whack and they've got a headache because the acids and the gases in the, in the gastric system are a mess, that's another whole treatment protocol. So it, when you talk about migraine, to be book perfect, you've got to be talking about the, the photosensitivity, the, the severe nausea, you know, the desire to vomit, any movement, any noise, any light, any of those would just drive you absolutely nuts. I used to have them as a kid, so I know what you're talking about. I haven't had one since I was a teenager, and I pray I never get another one. The, I've not had somebody come into my office and being into a classic migraine at the time for me to put the lights on. What would I use? I would probably use the infrared and I would use it at different trigger points on the neck and, and the side of the head uh, and not allowing them to see them because that right there would become, uh, you know, an aggravator, right? Um, but did I answer your question? You know, it's not an easy one to answer. Uh, I want to move on to upper respiratory issues like tonsillitis. I love tonsillitis. I really do. And I'm not a surgeon. Never have been. Uh, but it's fun when a kid comes in now and you see that the tonsils are swollen. There's tonsillar exudate or, or pus. And I can take the, the red wand and I can have that little person sit down on, on my treatment table and open their mouth and I can sit there and shine that light specifically on the tonsils. And after six to eight minutes, turn it off and ask them, how do you feel? Their voice is changing, they feel better, and their throat is not as sore. I didn't give them anything else. The child or the person that comes in and they say, oh, I've got this horrible earache. And again, I can take that infrared wand and put it right at the opening of the external auditory canal and leave it there four or five minutes, take it away, and they go, oh, that's better. Now, I also like to take it and, and run it right behind the TMJ to help open up the eustachian tube. And by doing that, the inner ear seems to drain enough to where they're getting some pretty quick relief. I've been able to do this over and over again. I have a state trooper that I treated recently that had no hearing in his left ear for the last couple of years. 
I don't know about you, but I don't think I'd want to be law enforcement and not be able to determine where somebody's coming up behind me. The, I treated him using the wand, and that evening he called me at home, and he said, I have a pain in that ear. Am I supposed to have a pain? And I said, sounds good to me. <laughs> We've opened up a pathway somehow. Well, he came to see me four days later, and he says, I have about 50% hearing back in that ear. Wow. Wow. He said, when I called, well, he called me earlier in the day to schedule an appointment. He says, when I called you, I had the phone in my right ear. I could hear the ventilation system in my left ear. He said, I haven't heard for the last couple of years. Now, I haven't seen him in the last couple of weeks, so I imagine he's doing quite well <laughs> because he's only about yay tall, and if he was having a problem, I'm sure he'd have walked back in through my doors. Right, you take it. Yeah, <laughs> oh, he, he's a pretty good guy. The uh, parotid glands, and we don't see too much of a problem, at least I don't get too many people in with parotid gland issues down through here, but the two patients that I have had over the course of the last year, uh, I've been able to use the, uh, the Spectrabrite, first time was using the paddles, just putting them right up here, and then since I got the wands, I've been able to use the wand. And, and it's been very effective relieving the pain. And because that pain can also go right on up into the gum, the patient was able to eat without so much discomfort. And so the patient recovered rather quickly instead of using the you know, analgesics that was given by a you know, competitive discipline. I'll put it that way. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> What about uh, tinnitus or tinnitus? Tinnitus. I have not really had anybody coming in where I can use it on the tinnitus. Uh, I have some tinnitus cases that I've been, you know, treating with, with homeopathic uh, protocols, uh, but I have not worked with one with us. You know, there's so many different kinds of tinnitus, too. Oh. So. You had any results with blood pressure? Hang on this minute. Let's save the questions for after your presentations okay. because we're going to have a question and answer session. Um, I had a dog wound. It was actually my brother. He had five dogs and he end, they ended up in a fight and he got in the middle of it. He ended up with a real nice puncture wound that went about two and a quarter centimeters up underneath his wrist. Well, that's quite a ways, you know, from a, a canine tooth. And that's not something that is all that easy to clean out. The thing I love about light therapy now is its capability of knocking down secondary infections. My brother recovered in very short order. Within just a few days, there was no redness. There was no drainage. There was, it just, it was almost like nothing happened, but it was a wound that was healing very cleanly. Cleaning up the blood with the Spectrobrite is something that's been very exciting, especially when we get to talking and, and working towards cleaning up hepatitis C. I have an, a patient that is a paramedic with one of the rural ambulance companies that was stuck uh, inadvertently by, uh, with a dirty needle from a patient. That he just had withdrawn the needle from a patient with, that was known hepatitis C. Well, he came into me and he says, I hear you've got a program that might keep me from picking up hep C. And they said, well, let's give it our best shot. Well, we treated him. I ran him through a protocol of 10 treatments. And they test him every 60 days. We are, we are now 18 months out from when that contamination happened. And he is still hep C free, which, you know, I'm pretty excited about. Mm -hmm. So, and the lab work is there to, not from this case, but from another case, the lab work is there to show that hep C can be beaten using light therapy. So where are we going? I don't think that there's any limit to it. I think we're just starting to scratch the surface. If I was in an area where I didn't have access to pharmaceuticals at all, the one piece of equipment I would want would be the Spectrobrite, because I can do so much with it. I have done so much with it. I have treated probably just over 200 patients in, in less than two years, 
using low light and laser therapy. And I'm just beginning to bring in a bigger and bigger crowd into my office uh, because they're saying, hey, this is Star Trek. This is what we've been looking for. So that's about all I have for you. Yeah, and I'm going to turn it back over to David so he can get into the question and answering. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Now, I'm sure you can see after Dr. Bond's presentation why some people think that we could raise the dead and grow <laughs> limbs. You know, <laughs> because once you start using it, you lose your fear of trying it on almost anything. Uh, let me ask you this, Dr. Bond. How many people have you hurt using light therapy? Nobody. Yeah, the, the side effects are so limited and the contraindications are so minor, and we'll get into that in a few minutes. They're, they're literally, I would not be afraid to use it on anything. So with that said, if you aren't careful, you'll adapt the same belief and we'll have people out there making claims that they shouldn't be making. So for those of you around the world that are watching and here, um, it's very important that you involve your primary care uh, physician or therapist or whomever in the uh, treatment process because there are occasions where there could be something that could be fighting, for instance, we have found that if, you're have, if you've had a steroid shot or taking steroid pills, um, that it can affect light therapy. Now, you can imagine the slide that Twyla put up earlier that showed the dirty window that light could not get through, therefore you couldn't have health. Well, steroids do that to light. They keep the cells from being able to absorb the photons so you're not getting the benefit. You say, well, so-and-so used it and they did it, and so-and-so used it and they did it. Well, you forgot to tell us that you've been on steroids for three weeks. So there are some things like that that will affect the benefits so that we cannot say that for everybody, every time, this will absolutely work. Nobody can say that about any therapy. But many times people leave the indication that they're almost guaranteeing that this is going to help them. Don't make your decision about this therapy based on the guarantees because your body is different chemically. Uh, if you pull my blood and your blood, it's not going to look the same at all. If you pull our uh, full uh, spectrum of uh, blood work or urinalysis or anything else, it's not going to look the same. So that light is going to impact your body differently than it impacts mine. The good news is that for most people, most of the time, the outcome is extremely exciting. That's the best we can say and still stay out of trouble. Most people, most of the time, they have a very exciting outcome. Okay, uh, you want to pop that uh, other presentation up? Yeah. Okay, we're going to try to get through this. And since uh, Rhonda, can I take that up here? Mm -hmm. You're going to need to help me interpret a few of these anyway. I read through this. This is something that we're just working on. It's a little preliminary, but at least it will give you... Oh, have I got it on here? Oh, good. He, he thinks I have it on here. Yeah. No, no, no. If you'll just come up here and get me started. Okay, that'll be good. She'll get it going. Okay, while, while she's getting it up on the screen, go ahead and get it up on yours. Um, we're working on uh, some charting that will be posted to the website that shows testimonies by program. Now, as you could probably tell, a lot of the testimonies will be about program number one only because it is so popular and has such a good variety of frequencies and pulses that most people just go to the default. When you turn the device on, it's automatically defaulted to Tesla. So I have to just hit the bottom and it takes off. Um, so we're... Excellent. That's okay. Let's go. We'll just do the speed speed jump. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, great. Okay. That's my that's my prompt. Okay. Stepping into the twenty first century. Okay. Um, 
This is something that will be posted to the website uh, and to YouTube very soon after we get there. Some spelling corrections to be made and some formatting issues to address. And Rhonda prepared this for me, and I don't understand some of her comments, so I'll have to ask her when I get there. <laughs> but generally speaking, here's what we want to accomplish, and it will be perfected. By the way, if you want to participate in these broadcasts from now on, I'm probably going to be doing one of these a month from the office. If you'll give us your information so we can notify you, those of you online, go to info at uh, millennialhealthsystems.com and just give us your email address and when we're ready for the next presentation we'll give you a notification because when this is perfected the next one probably will be to go back over this again and make sure we have it uh, a little dialed in a little better but to give the testimonies by color category because the, the thing that happens, we sell a unit and I get for the next two weeks, oh, I want to do this, where do I put it? Oh, I want to do this, where do I put it? What setting do I use? What program do I use? How do I get there? How do I turn that on? So uh, we're going to try to, on a monthly basis, as we have new attachments and new programs and new testimonies, we'll do updates. Um, we do have one very exciting development, I'll just tell you quickly. We have a, what I would consider to be a genius in color therapy, who has agreed to allow my sister Kathy to go and be trained. She already has some exposure previously to his system, and we believe in 90 days we're going to be able to do this. There will be a health questionnaire that you'll be able to take, and it will report back to you your deficiencies in vitamins and minerals and it will tell you which colors you need to address them. Is that pretty wild? We already have the technology side ready. Kathy's going to go and get updated so that when you submit your report, it will convert automatically the response to say, based on this, you are deficient in that, and you need to have this color as part of your therapy. That just blows my mind, you know. God's amazing. Anyway, okay, so I'm going to jump down, and these will all be on. Now, when it says, this is what I want to ask Rhonda, explain lemon blue and magenta quickly. Just come up here and do that. The basic rules I took out of Gaudi Ali's book, Into the Light, that's back there, or Let There Be Light, whichever one that he wrote. Anyway, he has some basic rules and protocols to follow for tonation and for basic color. So lemon is a color for the endocrine system, and he said use that when there is no fever. But if the person is feverish, then you change over and you use the blue color. So that's right out of his book. And then magenta is one that he recommends on the chest area for lungs. And then what you see we'll be adding over the next month is specific colors for particular organs and even Twyla has talked about green in Chinese traditional medicine is known for the liver. We're going to put all those applications up for you. So that's what that's referring to. Okay, thanks. Okay, <clears throat> now trying to take the presentations and make one easy interface for you. You see blue has the effect that you see on the screen. It's sedative, cleansing, cooling, heating, and, and uh, what's the water one? Um. Oh, oh, it's the color of water, sorry. Uh, oxygen. So blue has oxygen, uh, H2O. So when you have an oxygen deficiency, blue is the color. Red, hydrogen, uh, and we'll start listing all of the elements that go with the colors. Red is stimulating, warming, energizing, strengthens blood flow, stops pain. What was irritant? Uh, it, can, it can be an irritant to certain conditions because it, green and red are opposites, okay. so it will absorb. So in some cases it can be an irritant. And we'll list that on here. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's a hemoglobin builder. Red also is a vasodilator um, and a... Implement, reduces inflammation. 
Uh, we have the same for green and yellow and orange. And again, don't be overly concerned today because this is a work in progress. It will be refined over the next 30 days and be posted to the website. Um, but you can see there what greens and yellows and oranges do. I'm not going to take time to read all these because this is an extensive list that we're about to get into. Scarlet and violet. We've just found some really interesting things on ultraviolet. And it's wild that they're recommending from 380 to 405 as kind of a sweet spot. Well, our bulb, the 100,000 hour bulb, is 385 to 405. It's right on target. And there's deep blues and golds and whites, and these are different nanometer wavelengths. And we kick in here around the 400. The reason that you can see just barely light coming out of the uh, UV wand is that it's at the low end of the visible spectrum. So there's some frequency that you cannot see, and there's a small amount that you can see. So it looks like the UV wand is barely working, but believe me, it works just fine. Uh, for itching, uh, alopecia, eczema, and uh, psoriasis. Okay, it's hard to read from over here. Then the blue is 450 to 495. Ours is 485 nanometers with the benefits there. I'm going to kind of go through this quickly. It will be available to you, so don't worry. Uh, green is 495 to 570. We're at 520 or 25, I think, so we're right in the middle there. Um, which orange, that's right in the middle of ours. We're at four, uh, 590. We also have an amber, and I don't recall off the top of my head the amber nanometers. Uh, then we get to red, and you can see there's lots of things here. Vasodilation, wound care, burns, inflammatory re response, uh, starch repairs, speeds healing. Red is, a, is really a wonderful color for all this. And then you go into the infrareds. Uh, we do have a wand in development. <laughs> this is our challenge. You can't see infrared. So we build it, plugged it in. OK, is it working? <laughs> well, we don't know. <laughs> so we're trying to find a little piece of cellophane or plastic or something that you can look through to see that the infrared is on. Short term, we're building it with a red below it and the infrared on top and you get just a little bleed through of red like you do on the UV with the blue. So you can see a little bit of color to know at least the device is working, but then we want to give you something to show that the infrared portion is working. Our infrared, I believe, is 930 nanometers, which is excellent frequency for lots of things if we can just figure out how to confirm to you that it's working so you don't get it, plug it in and say, I don't think this is working. So. That, that will be in the next few weeks as well. And nanometers can go way, way up. As Twyla said earlier, the frequencies can go up to a million nanometers or more, but uh, we're not going to mess with any of those. Okay. Now, <clears throat> here's where the, the testimonies begin. And she put amber in an amber slide, so that makes it kind of easy to figure out what we're talking about. Um, so you have here listed, and, and again, if I read all of these, we'll be here for an hour and we want to take some time in a little bit, but I'll, I'll read some of them to you. Um, symptoms, uh, going downhill, worsening, uh, following a dental procedure in 2012 uh, with anesthesia. Uh, it was documented by the MD, memory loss, no recognition of locale, anger, aggravated, aggravated frustration, depression, panic, and attacks. No recollection of people or previous places lived. Cognitive and reasoning ability was gone, pretty much. So the treatment began. Spectra Schumann on the back of the neck, amber light on the right side of the head, double sessions two times a day. Week one, depression subsided. Week two, frustration ended more peaceful. Week four, more hopeful for recovery. Week eight, childhood memory started to return. Now, I, that one alone is enough to get my attention. You know, there are 15 million Alzheimer's patients in the United States. 15 million. Unbelievable. Uh, week 10, recognizing street signs and locale. Week 12, remember street names and zip code. Not house numbers yet, but 
just the fact that anything would even stop it is amazing. And the fact that it has reversed to any level is wonderful. And I don't know if you can fully appreciate that, but this is a big deal. Spectre Schumann, 88-year-old uh, male, painful intestinal bacteria, symptoms, three weeks of medication without diminishing pain or diarrhea after meds were completed. Treatment started, Spectre Schumann, one to three times each week, 30 days after the last meds. Results, both pain and diarrhea stopped within days. Now, if, if this were just one or two stories, you could think we were all deluding ourselves and in wishful thinking. But this is now becoming hundreds and hundreds of responses on so many different levels that you have to say, well, wait a minute, something's going on. Uh, Spectre Schumann, 87-year-old male, crippling arthritis, pain in the shoulder, was the mail carrier. Symptoms, three weeks of medication without diminishing pain uh, or diarrhea after meds were completed. Treatment, started Spectre Schumann one to three times a week. Results, pain stopped within days. Uh, this is Charlie's friend, Nook, a, a friend of Marilyn. It's ex this is from Marilyn. It's exciting to watch these men's health and life improve. That's the therapist. Uh, Spectre Schumann, which is one of our programs. Uh, Mike in his mid-50s, his symptoms had a right, right ankle pain, began four years earlier, left thigh skin lesion for over two years. You know, as you get older, some things just don't heal. Treatment, Spectre Schumann directly affected on the affected areas. The result, no more pain in the ankle, even with cold winter, le uh, less lesion is healing fast. Mike believes it will be gone completely soon. Periodic heartburn for about five years also cleared with Spectre Bright usage. Now, this is something I want to remind you of. I, I used this example the last time. But let's say that we took this room and filled it with four inches of water. And I plugged a light, a, a wire into the wall, and I had two bare wires hanging out. And I said, I'm going to drop this into the water. But don't worry, all of you in the back, because you're so far away it won't matter. What would you do? You jump up on the table or something pretty quick, wouldn't you? Because electricity goes through that water, and how much of our body is water, Twyla? 99%. 99%. So when light therapy is applied, you think you're treating your neuropathy in your feet, and your thumbs quit hurting. How can that possibly be? Because the water tissue in, uh, in your body is carrying that photonic energy throughout the whole body. So it doesn't surprise me that we get these oddball responses. While I was treating, one of them says, I was treating the bottom of my feet and my floaters went away in my eyes. How's that happen? Well, you're energizing the body with light energy. You're taking those telomeres and you're putting photonic energy back in there and suddenly things wake up that have been asleep for a long time. Okay. Um, Spectre Schumann and Tesla, uh, multiple male and female participants from a local church congregation. What were their symptoms? They were in a drug program. Okay, so People always ask me, what will this do for drug addicts? I had no idea. Who, who gave us this one? Charlie. Charlie, okay. Uh, treatments, use, you know, Charlie only would try this. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Charlie. Uh, Treatments used the Spectra Schumann and Tesla Red for 45 minutes, two to three days consecutively applied to the back of the neck, back of the head, and two paddles on the wrist. Results, all reported increased clarity in thinking and their desire was gone for their drugs. Now, <laughs> that obviously would take a lot more research and study to say what it will or won't do, but that's, you have to admit that's a pretty encouraging response for the first couple of days. Um, 65 year old female, symptoms, diagnosed with a breast lump, no biopsy, agreed to mastectomy, radiation, and chemo. Treatment, applied the amber light directly to the lump two times a day for two weeks and back of the neck. The results, when checked, the radiologist noted the size had decreased one millimeter. Pretty significant for that period of time. She went ahead and had the mastectomy. Everybody makes their own decisions in life, but I'm encouraged that there was some response. A 65-year-old female undergoing chemotherapy, her symptoms, debilitating symptoms of vomiting and weakness after the third chemo session, chose light therapy for those symptoms. 
uh, treatments. She used the amber light on her stomach, Spectre Schumann on the back of the neck, two paddles, double sessions, two times a day, until chemo sessions two weeks later. The result, her energy increased the next day, her vomiting stopped, no side effects after the fourth chemo session, stopped them after number four. Wow. Now, you have to forgive me. You know, my, my reference to life is I just love the Lord and... <laughs> And he is pretty smart. Um, to, and it's in him is light and there's no darkness at all. All right. So when Twyla said, when, it, when darkness happens, where are you? Dead. So there's no dead in God. And when we take, you don't have to be gung-ho Christian for this to help you. All right. I'm just telling you, I am, and it just thrills my heart to see the benefit that's coming to people by bringing them something so simple. How hard is this? We don't cut you. We don't stuff stuff down you. Anyway. Amber Light, 65-year-old female, undergoing radiation. Completed three to six suggested <clears throat> sessions, minor fatigue, body, burned skin from the radiation. Treatment. Wound care and green light for two weeks following surgery. The result, scar healed fast without incident, little or no pain. The patient believes light therapy over the three-month period made a major difference in the outcome. That, and you also know that you can, well, we'll get to that in a minute, energize water. Spectra Schumann and Amber Light, symptoms, a 28-year-old female. Now this one, I've got to do some more research on before we throw it up permanently on this deal, but... The claim is from the patient and the primary care physician, quadriplegic after 16, after a vaccination. At age, at age 16, she was vaccinated, then she became quadriplegic. Okay, then she got a vaccination at 16, then became quadriplegic. Four treatments on the back of her neck, her head, where her head lays on her shoulders, applied double sessions, hands and feet. Trapezoid and stomach, wand was used on reflexology points, Spectre Schumann on the gut, Tesla and Schumann 528 on extremities. Looked like this has to be from Charlie. It, it was Dr. Coons. Dr. Coons, Charlie's friend. They just use everything. Okay. Uh, the result, she had extremity movement. Now, what? Someone is a quadriplegic and by applying light therapy, they get movement in their extremities? We're going to check this one out more, but I mean, Dr. Coons, who was here at our last conference, competent medical practitioner, is her primary care physician. No, he's her chiropractor. Her chiropractor. The MD wants to now do a study. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, I got it. Her MD, as I told you, this is a work in progress. Her MD, who tried to inject her with Botox, caused her response a miracle and is requesting research on quadriplegics. With light therapy in conjunction with the with, chiropractor. Sometimes. With light therapy and getting Dr. Kuntz involved. That's so awesome. so uh, it's just remarkable, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, does that mean everybody that has their spinal cord severed is going to walk? No. But the fact that we can help some people get some quality of life back is astounding. Uh, this is now Tesla. This is going to be 80 year old female symptoms. Uh, ill all of her life. RH negative blood, thyroid partially removed, susceptible for bronchial infections and knee pain. Treatment, two paddles, Tesla basic on one knee, the same on the back, and the paddles on the lungs. Result, knee pain reduced 60%, still swollen some, lungs enlarged as breathing increased, low pelvic back pain reduced. Laura, 40-year-old female. Symptoms, suspected, uh, oh, suspected, is that suspected? She, it wasn't diagnosed. Oh, oh, she thought it was a torn rotator cuff injury. It's really hard to read from here. No response under chiropractic care. Class 4 didn't reduce her pain level. Treatment, UV wand applied, hmm, this is a Tesla default story. Okay. UV wand applied to the shoulder area, swelling reduced immediately, pain level decreased, added castor oil to the back overnight, infectious boils came to the surface, used UV light again, and the pain and swelling was gone. 
This was trial experimentation. Trial. Yeah, and we did use the, the Tesla default program also on her, but it didn't seem to make that much of a difference. And I just happened to notice that this was this big swollen line down her arm. So I thought, well, UV might kill whatever that is, but I don't know why I thought that, but it did. It was so you used the Tesla, didn't get the response you wanted, used the wand. It, you could see it shrinking while yeah. I was doing it. It was, I wish I had a wow. video, but it was so exciting to Which see is, it just shrinking right in front of my eyes. And then I just told her that the cast for real pack went overnight, and the next day, two boils came out of it, and she was fine. <laughs> That's amazing because the Tesla pad has 54 lights and the UV has one. Yeah, well, it's just truly really amazing. It's, you know, it's frequencies. Like that. I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Heather, 20 year old. Symptoms uh, burns, bone <coughs> spur broke in her heel. Ooh, that sounds painful. Uh, Insect completely swollen over the heel. She, had, she wore a boot, multiple. Health problems, size 3, petite, that's a little lady. Uh, treatment, Tesla default plus the UV wand for 3 minutes. Place the paddles inside a tube sock, one bottom and one on top, uh, on the foot. I, just, I use a tube sock, I cut the toe out, and I yeah. put the wand on the top and the bottom, and that holds it on Okay, the so a sock with the toe cut out and just slip the, the paddle in. Okay. Mm -hmm. The result, egg-sized. Uh, Love. Love. Oh, okay. Man, that's hard. I know. I'm sorry. So sorry. I'm coming over here, Doug. Egg size lump reduced after the first treatment to a quarter of the size by the second treatment. Dime size when she left, almost invisible after the third treatment, still uh, wearing the boot because of the broken bone. Um, now, I could go through and just keep reading and reading and reading these. Uh, let me just see. Cold sores. Uh, completely cleared, usually last weeks. Uh, persistent athlete's foot, not responding to traditional medications for years. Three to four times uh, treatment on Tesla with the paddles on the feet, fungus is gone. This is probably the fourth or fifth time I've heard this. Uh, in fact, the gentleman who owns this building, severe athlete's feet, he'd been working on it for years and years and years. Nothing would take care of it. He said, well, that thing, she always calls me, well, that thing helped this. And I said, well, try it and see. So he did. It's gone. No athlete's foot. Uh, shoulder and back injuries. Uh, treated with Tesla. All major symptoms gone after eight treatments. Knee pain. Level 10 knee pain. I know this gentleman. Uh, after 10 treatments over a month, uh, pain was gone. Slight level 1 to 2 returned. After three months, he's coming back for another treatment. Well, if you can get rid of knee pain for three months, this is the same guy, I believe. No, no, this is Charlie. Stuck a tree branch in his head. Um, when he was out running, they had a branch that was cut off and ran right into the, right into it. He tells it much better than I do. Uh, he was outside at night. Yes, he was out, yeah. Well, that's normal. Um, so he stuck the tree branch in his head, opened it up pretty good, come running in the house, bleeding everywhere. So his wife sits him down, puts the paddle on his head. He called me and said, I need to get another paddle. This one's ruined. It's all full of blood. Uh, but anyway, you can see um, the result was the bleeding stopped. No soreness the next day. The skin reattached by day three. No gaping hole. Scar barely visible. No sign of trauma. Pretty amazing. And they want this all. Yeah. Now, here's, here's the thing. I get to hear these stories every single day. You know, you have one and you'll use it once or twice and hear, see, oh, I think it's helping. And somebody will say, well, I tried and it didn't do much for me. But I hear this stuff every day. You heard what Dr. Vaughn gets to do every day. Uh, as we get this out into more and more health practitioners and are able to afford the time and energy and money it takes to do all these double blind studies and clinical tests and so on, then the medical community will come around and maybe give us a try. Until then, there are thousands of people that can be helped if we'll just take the time to make sure we do this correctly and don't step across the, the line and create problems. 84-year-old uh, male, knee clicking and popping with pain, 
with movement. The result after treatment using uh, two to three times a week. I see. Yeah, he bought his own. Oh, he bought one. He had to use just the red test one two times. Oh, okay. He bought it and he's using it himself. He's so excited. Okay. Um, Seventy-year-old female. Oh, this is a cool one. Legally blind, no visibility outdoors in full sunlight. Take somebody outside, look at the sun, what do you see? Nothing. Okay? Used Tesla default one time uh, one time a week. Oh, I remember this lady. She was coming to church and using it after church once a week. Okay. Uh, so she'd put the paddle, and this is the one that had the paddle under her foot, one over her eye. I'm thinking, what? You know, it's the same thing. The energy's there. The result, after one week, no change. You know, most people would say, I want my money back. This is stupid. What am I doing? After two weeks, little specks of light started flashing every other day. After three weeks, a seconds of flashes and visible forms. After four weeks, flashes of color forms. She could see her daughter in the car seat next to her. Mm. David, and she added the charged water on week one. Oh, yeah, charged water. Now, because our wands are waterproof, you can put that same program, Tesla, put it into some water, charge the water, program the water for 10, 15 minutes, run through one cycle, and when you drink it, the energy in that water and the energy in this water are the same. So you can get the same benefit or increase the benefit. Abraham, bring me one of those jars. You can't put the paddle in the jar, can you? Yeah, the it's waterproof. Not the, the wand. The wand. Not the right. paddle, the wand. You can take the jar on a paddle or put the right. wand. Yeah you, can put, right. yeah, you can take a glass jar and set the paddle on it, or you can drop the wand in the water because it's waterproof. Yes, ma'am. At lunch, we were wondering if Charlie put these paddles on this lady's eye because she was blind, but if you're just having macular degeneration or presbyopia or something, how would you possibly use those? Dr. Bright, help with eyesight. Would you use the wands or on the acupuncture point? I have several people who are using the paddles at about a foot away with their eyes closed. Because oh. believe me, it's plenty, plenty of light. And the light energy doesn't care. Remember, it's going to pass through your skin anyway. So we start about a foot away with your eyes closed. And if your tolerance is okay, you can move a little closer. But you don't need to put it. Good night. You don't need to put it here. There's plenty of energy. So, well, you can use the wands. I remember the la lady in the story that she made wouldn't let him uh, put the goggles on her. She wanted to go right on her, yeah. on her, right here. So. Yeah. So, <clears throat> again, now you can imagine somebody says, "Oh, we can cure blindness." Please don't do that. We can make you walk. Don't do that. Yeah, no, cancer will be cured. If you do that, we're all in trouble. Now, the challenge is, if you say that, they don't come after you. They come after me. And since I make these things, if you ever want to have another one, please take care of me. Here's something else we found. This is a, a product I've had for a long time for topical relief of joint pain. It has emu oil, peppermint oil, ginger root, a um, bunch of stuff on here. The ingredients are all in the back. It also has colloidal silver in it. Well, colloidal silver is light sensitive. So we're having this product made, this does not have colloidal silver in it right now because we want to use it as a prep cream for an area that you're going to use the light therapy. Remember, if you're going to use Tesla, it's a vasodilator on red. It's going to open up your pores and give better penetration. So this is available also as an enhancement to the light therapy. Okay, just wanted you to see that. Um, did we do this one? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, Seventy-year-old male, a female. Uh, I can't read it. Oh, yeast, uh, itching and pain in the legs and feet, floaters in the eyes. Oh, this is the lady that put the pad on her feet. Got rid of her, it, huh? Just use oh, good, thank you. Go down, and he'll keep up with you. Okay, great. Keep up with you on this one. 
you can read it. Okay, that's yeah. more okay, let's just Here we go. Together. That's good. All right, where am I? Um, oh, uh, she had yeast causing itching. Yeah, she was able to dance at her friend's wedding for the first time, had no pain in her feet in years, and that's when she also noticed that the floaters were gone. Um, 59 year old male, wrenched back, excruciating pain, couldn't walk, had to crawl inside. Mm -hmm. uh, char this is an interesting one. Charge the water for 45 minutes. I don't know how in the world, if you're sitting there in pain, you've got the patience to charge water before you drink it. Uh, drank it. When he stood up, noticed that the pain had reduced. The next morning, the pain was completely gone without anything except the water. Oh. He just wanted to see if it would work. Yeah. You can guess who that was. 50-year-old 50 50 year old male and female uh, facing fifty dollars to $70,000 knee surgeries. Okay, Obviously, they had painful knees and so on. Result, 80% need follow-up maintenance, 20% still pain-free. So with because we never know the extent of the damage in anything we're trying to address, the response is going to be different time periods and different degrees of benefit but most of the time, as we said, most people find benefit. 40-year-old uh, male, there's no symptoms. No. Well, this one's easy because they didn't have anything wrong, but we helped them. Sorry. <laughs> we'll go to the next one. And then we've got a boy named Sue, too. Yeah, a boy named Sue. We'll fix that. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, 49-year-old female had a broken ankle, uh, not set several months prior. The bone began to swell. MRI showed soft tissue damage. Crooked bone, tendon damage, prognosis six weeks downtime to recover after suggested surgery. After 10 sessions at night, no surgery, pain, and swelling gone. Oh, that's good. 43 uh, year old female, carpal tunnel syndrome, placed the wristband on one paddle and the other above. So you have a one above, one below on Red Basic and Schumann 528. Diminish the pain after three sessions, after eight treatments, no pain at all. So, I mean, this goes, we can just keep going and going and going. And this is, we've only been collecting testimonies for about six months where we've tried to capture them and, and create them. So you can see that, and we don't have all of them. Uh, David Doctor, send us your testimonies. He's down in Texas. And by the way, he wanted me to correct my my presentation this morning where I listed the countries, he said, I forgot to mention Texas. <laughs> um, so we have several people who have promised us testimonies and they haven't been turned in yet. Prosper? Yes, okay. So, <clears throat> knee pain, bone on bone, no cartilage, walking with a cane. One paddle on the top and the bottom of the knee, cycle red basic and 528. After the third treatment, pain reduced. Now, does that mean that you never have to have knee replacements anymore? No. It's bone on bone, that's as bad as it gets, right? Well, we don't know. We didn't go in there and look. I don't know if it really is bone on bone or they just told them that. It really wasn't. But the result is that the pain decreased significantly. 44-year-old um, female, severe knee and pain inflammation. This is uh, Tesla and Schumann with 528. When laying down or bending to walk, the pain level was at a 10. After treatment, the, uh, the pain reduced to three, minor discomfort with when the knee was bent, slept all through the night, no pain. One thing that I'm not hearing that here, that I hear a lot from people I talk to, almost invariably people start sleeping better. In fact, many people go to sleep while they're getting their treatment. Now, some people we have to wake up and tell them it's time to go home. So. Uh, 49 year old female, ankle bone was broken, not set. Oh, we did that one, didn't we? Is that a different one? Uh, that's the same one. Maybe. Yeah, that's the same one. Uh, 48 year old male, knee problem, walking problem, 10 treatments on the front and the back of the knee, red and 528. After those sessions, walks with no pain. So, I mean, literally, we, there are. We got that one too. Some of those are duplicates. Okay. Then we go to greens. Uh, Acne-like red blotches on the cheeks, forehead, slightly on the nose, on the sides. Green paddles applied to both uh, both face sides, moving to the forehead during treatment. Result: noticeable results in rash reduction. No blotches after the third session. 
remaining clear through monthly cycle into the following month. Uh, one, one monthly is maintenance, once a month is maintenance. Okay. So uh, in Fatigo, result, uh, noticeable results immediately, no blushes after the second session. Uh, go to the blues, acne and scarring. We, we get great results with acne and scarring. Uh, in fact, somewhere, somebody's actually going to be brave enough to take these pictures and, and share them with us because the results are very dramatic with wound care uh, as, and acne and scarring. I uh, treated the sides of the face, the result, progress after each treatment. After 10 treatments, all the acne is gone, no follow-up necessary. The scars are gone. We hear that over and over, acne scars disappearing. Um, Billy, 46-year-old male, here, this is a cool one, almost died from MRSA infection following medical uh, uh, drain after surgery. The drain they put in infected and the MRSA got in, alternating high-power antibiotics for two months didn't touch it. So they decided to use the blue paddles on the infected areas after three days in a row, and they did it morning and evening. Infection was gone, complete, they completed their 10-day cycle, surgery scar shrunk on the blue light. And she told me, I know this lady, she told me that they had a trouble after 10 days finding the scar. Wow. And he nearly died from this. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. 53-year-old female, lymphedema. Lymphedema is when you're, you get fluid retention, your extremities swell. The lady's legs were like this big. She came into the office. She put a paddle on some of these, these uh, tear. It, literally, your skin gets so thin it just tears and begins to weep. Uh, she put the paddles on, and the, the uh, sore started to close after the first treatment. Uh, blue light closed the, completely after 10 sessions. Isn't that? You think... You know, that's really a cool story, but think what it's like for her. Yeah. And she's got just just uh, water running down her legs all the time because her skin is so thin, and it closes those sores up. Wow, that's just cool. Uh, aqua, what's sugar thumb? Sh sugar finger thumb. It's something that a massage therapist has. Oh, okay. I don't know what that is. But I guess it hurts. Uh, sugar finger thumb. And she had no grip. No grip. Okay. Thumb tendon displaced. No grip in her left hand. This was in November of last year. Saw three MDs. No relief. They recommended surgery, which they always do. If you're a surgeon, what do you think the answer is? Surgery. Surgery. <laughs> Very few surgeons say, go see a massage therapist. Anyway. So the treatment was aqua. Started in January. The results, the tendon is a third its size. The uh, pain level uh, pain levels diminished, swelling reduced after four sessions, notable improvement after each session. Magenta. So I'm wanting you to see that while 90% of the stories you'll hear will be Tesla, blue, green, these other things have great benefit. Uh, ophthalmologist diagnosed cataracts covering three-fourths of both eyes. Have you ever seen someone with cataracts? Yeah. This looks like somebody's taken white out and painted on their eyes. The treatment, magenta paddles used four times over three weeks on both eyes, treated post with a wand two times in November. Results, noticeable improvement after the first treatment, full vision in the cornea where the cataract obstructed the vision. Can you imagine? What, what's the normal treatment for cataracts? They cut your eye, put, take the old one out, put an a artificial one in, you run the risk of infection if it works or it doesn't work. And here, the result was done with light only. Full vision in, cor in the cornea where cataract obstructed the vision. Full vision restored after the third treatment. No visible cataract on the cornea. I, 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 eye floaters. Um, the result, uh, floaters left after the first treatment. Full vision in the cornea. Now. Is everybody going to have full vision restored after one treatment? No. Of course not. But if there's a chance with just light, you can save somebody the expense and the inconvenience of eye surgery? Uh, animal benefits. We are getting stories, you know, people buy these things and take them home and they've got the vet tells them their pet has arthritis. 
this one had ter <laughs> How do you know if a pet has Tourette's syndrome? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that this is real, but. Well, the cusses. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, to put the magenta paddle on the top and the back of the neck, the result of shaking stopped halfway through the application. Now, animals don't know that they're supposed to act better. The dog left the room to go to sleep. When he returned, he looked at uh, the unit and the owner as if to say thank you. Okay. That's a little embellished. But anyway, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, Spectre Schumann Tesla default. Uh, like I said, these. Is this the last one? Yeah, this is the dogs. Oh, dogs, okay. A symptom the dog had arthritis. Okay. 18 year old cat, lithless, laid on the pad on the back one to two sessions periodically. Result the dog, she jumps up, runs, and plays with no arthritis, arthritis symptoms. The cat brings. Her uh, new life acts like a kitten after treatments. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so this there will be follow-ups. We'll clean this up, get it in, make sure it's in the right format, and uh, make it available on the website. But the next time we gather, um, which will probably be via the camera uh, from my office, um, we'll have this in much more organized format and take some of Dr. Vaughn's stories and get all this put together. But as you can see, there's no shortage of being able to declare and say, hey, here's what's happening with light therapy. I, I know that because it's not new, but it's new to us. As you see this happen, it's very easy to get very excited. And then you go out and tell somebody and they look at you like, are you, have you lost your mind? What have you been drinking? I mean, are you serious? But we want today our goal was to show you this has been around a long time. People have paid a dear price. The science behind it is real and verifiable. We have medical practitioners who are using it every day with astounding results. What I have just shared with you, 90% of this was people who bought it and took it home and have these results themselves. Now, if you're going to spend the kind of money you're going to pay for our device and take it home, you probably wouldn't make up the fact that you're feeling better. You probably would want a refund if it didn't work. You know how many of these we've refunded since we started? One. And it's because the person was moving and they were going to get use another form of therapy and they needed the money and wondered if I wouldn't do them a favor and take it back. And I did. Right now we have four in inventory. I don't have one at my house. Every time we get ahead, we sell them. You know, I have, I have thumb problems that I can't wait to address. <laughs> I have some issues of my own, but I keep selling everything we make. I have four available right now. We sold one this morning already online. I don't know where it's going. I just got a call at lunch and said, hey, do you have one? I've got one sold. Um, we have, so we have three available today. We will have five available next week, and in two and a half weeks, we'll have 50. There's a little bit of a lag because we had to take the cash from the sales and take a deep breath and order 50, which was a big step for us. But we have 50 on the way. The boards are already made. The parts are already ordered. The boxes are already in. The light pads are already made. Uh, so 50, but it's three and a half weeks from now before we have those 50. So we have three today, five next week, and then two and a half weeks after that we have 50. All right, um, we're going to take a 15 minute break, reset the room a little bit, get ready for questions and answers. I know you may have some, I'm sure folks online have some. If you online have not been able to get your question in or are concerned that it didn't get through, if you can text your question to my cell phone and then delete the number after the session, uh, it's 405-740-0676. Text your questions in. 15 minutes, we'll regroup and answer. Okay? Thank you. Okay.
<laughs> you were on? Okay, great. Um, okay, thanks for rejoining us. Thanks for rejoining us. Uh, we're going to do a, a panel question here for a little bit. Let me get this centered. Okay, first we'll take questions from the room. Anyone? Yes, sir. My first question is, has anybody had any results with high blood pressure? Let me repeat, has anyone had results with high blood pressure? I have not tried it in that application. No one? There's one slide that I remember um, that related to that, and that was a, a byproduct of the life. Uh, let me just say that I've had some experience with high blood pressure results uh, by using ultraviolet and amber on the wrists. Uh, there, there is, uh, many report, a detoxifying effect that happens in the blood, and when the debris in the blood is lessened, blood pressure tends to drop 10 to 15 points. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, has anyone had any uh, positive results working with someone with a hernia? Okay. Hang on just a minute. It, it, Charlie or somebody, if you could text me and let me know, if you can hear the questions being asked from the back of the room, I won't have to repeat them all. But the question is, what are anybody's results with hernias? I'm using it on someone. I shipped a unit to Louisiana, and we're testing that right now. And I was going to look up in Dr. Gaudiali's book while they're talking. <laughs> See, if, because I'm thinking, no. I haven't personally had any experience with that, but I think even myself, being here today has been so great just because I'm like, why oh, people with that? Why didn't I try that? You know? <laughs> so it's helping me to really get, I need to try it on everything, right? I, I wouldn't be afraid to try it on anything as long as you ease into it and you're cautious about what you're doing. Any results with hernia? Uh, see, no, the, the only hernia case that I've had recently was a torsion testicle and that surgically repaired. Oh. Had to be. Okay. It is. It's on page 211. The nice thing about this book, it has an index. Uh, so I'll see what it says. Okay, it's not page 211. It's no. it, they're they're like recipes and they're numbered. Uh -huh. uh, yes, you use lemon as on the systemic front, yellow and indigo on in the affected area, and it's likelier to be successful with children up to five years of age. A supported up clients may be necessary temporarily. May be helpful at any age, but how effective depends on the individual circumstances. And that was Dr. Golly's intake that they rewrote in the 40s and 50s. And I would just interject that since it's a muscle and in Chinese medicine, the muscles and sinews are ruled by the liver. The liver loves green. I would always try green on it just because that's something that the liver loves and stuff the liver loves it, then the muscles and sinews will also love it. Mm. Good. Any other questions? And what about uh, the prostate and information on that? Uh, information on treating prostate. Yes, there's, uh, there is a urologist out of Memphis that is actually using it placing the spectrobrite paddle down in the suprapubic region <clears throat> and he's running it both on the number one Tesla and following it up also with the green and I've got a patient I'm just getting ready to start on that with. So that will be something that over time we'll have more to post about. Right. <clears throat> it's kind of important to know they're not recommending using the probe for that just the lights in the area and yes. you, you know so we had some people ask about that last time. I just want to be sure we are clear on that. Just the light paddles. Yeah, believe me, the, the paddle with 54 lights is plenty bright to have a positive benefit. What about uh, having a uh, sheet on the, the probe? What kind? Uh, well, clear plastic? Or okay, let me, not, let me. Not for that particular problem. Let me make a correction. We don't call them probes. Okay. They're wands so because wand. a probe indicates you're going to stick it in someplace. Ah, okay. And that's a whole other FDA level we don't want to mess okay. with. So we have wands, we don't have probes. Mm -hmm. But yes, if you wanted to use it, to say, to for the ear to keep it clean, you could put something over the end of it. Yes. The throat. Or the throat, yeah. yeah. And 
And I think you can use just tear off a strip of saran wrap because I read somewhere that saran, the light will go through saran wrap. Yes, it will. So that's a suitable uh, solution. Okay. I was curious about um, with Alzheimer's and dementia being treated with the amber light that you all were talking about earlier. What about like schizophrenia or you know personality disorders, borderline? Are we seeing results in that regard? I haven't used it in that arena. I have. There's some EPUB articles mm -hmm. out there that you can look at, and then I believe we have someone that's using that on personality disorders right now, and we're working with them to get their testimonies in order. Okay. And then I think I had mentioned during the early presentation about the Murrah Building bombing. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. people are obviously trained in it, but we... I haven't run across right. a need it's to still try it. And newish to all of us. Right. <laughs> yeah, we have no personal experience at this point, right. but I will say there's there are plenty of articles online mm -hmm. about using light for those therapies, mm -hmm. and in time we'll we'll get some testimonies on that. Anyone else? Um, a root canal are typically very infectious, and they usually got a infection, hidden infection. And they've been kind of sticking a no cane type solution up there, and all of a sudden the joint will move. Has anybody had experience putting a wand up there to sterilize those root canals? Yes. Okay, so the question was, have there any effect on using any of the light therapies for root canal? I've taken the the, uh, the red light uh, wand and apply it from the outside. Don't need to go up in between the cheek or the gum. You can just place it right over the cheek from the outside and turn it on, and there is enough energy to get effective treatment right through the cheek. And I also mm -hmm. use the UV one directly on those, and it does seem to work also. So had some pretty good success with many dental type in inflammations and things with the with the UV light. UV just light. as a just as a matter of information. If you use the RGB one, the one with the black cover on it, it does have a red only feature, but the red wand is twice as bright as the red on the RGB. So you'll get more energy for going through tissue with the red only than you will with the RGB. I have, <clears throat> I have a lot of friends that were in Vietnam and um, subject to Agent Orange. And I also know that that kind of lodges in the liver. And um, I've been afraid to do anything for fear that it would all release from the river, the liver. And can you speak to that? Yeah, I can, because I'm also a victim of Agent Orange. Okay. Now, not wanting to put it directly over the liver, but using it over the wrist, because you're going to treat the blood as a whole. Let the blood be treated here and go to the liver, and then using a slower process for cleaning things up theoretically, um, rather than placing it on the liver direct. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting positive results in how my body's health is returning. Um, but there's another factor that's playing in here, and I talked to David a little bit ago about it. Because I'm around this energy now every day, not it being applied to me, but to my patients. So I'm handling it with my patients. I believe I'm getting a residual benefit from it because not only is the energy going into them, but what doesn't go into them is bouncing to me. So cumulatively, I, I believe, and this is purely theoretical, I believe that I am becoming a beneficiary of everybody else coming in sick, and I get to treat them. Do you feel that way, Twyla? I do. Oh, yeah. I, I think that's too. a really great observation. I believe that is true, yes. But I have skin issues that are pretty well defined how the VA looks at, at Agent Orange, and I have some of those same skin issues, but they're diminishing. And the VA says look, they don't diminish. Mine are. My energy has improved. My health, my, my ambulatory <laughs> capability has really skyrocketed over the last couple of years since I, I started getting into all of this. So I would love to run a research protocol, uh, and, and I may do that. 
spe you know, specifically before, uh, because of the Agent Orange issue, because there's too many vets that are out there that were contaminated. You use Tesla for that. You betcha. And I like the green. Go to the green frequency. That is a healing frequency. It is a wonderful uh, frequency. Don't be afraid to use it. I think it's also really important what Dr. Vaughn has said. Treat the blood instead of the liver directly because you could possibly, you know, have too many toxins circulating if you do it the other yeah. way. And you know, it's really important that their colon is moving also because they're going to need to eliminate. So please look at that as an overall part of the protocol. Yes, ma'am. Um, you talked earlier about charging water with the light. How does that charge, once it's in the water, it stays there, or does it dissipate over time? If it was to sit by itself for a while, do you have to drink it immediately? It, we're, I just got a text. We're having <coughs> excuse me, trouble hearing from the back because the microphone's pointed that way. The question was about charging water. How do you use it? How long do you charge it? And how long does it last to keep the charge? Uh, I'd like to try to address that one. In 2006, the Nobel Prize winner in uh, physics, part of his program that, that got him the Nobel Prize was proving that water could receive a charge and that it would hold that. Now, Dr. Samuel Hahnemann, who was the founder of homeopathy, coined the phrase vital energy. Whether the vital energy is in the human body or it's in a product that you're going to introduce into the body, it holds that energy. And unless something comes along and disturbs that frequency, it'll continue to hold it. So the real bottom line answer, does it hold it? Yes. How long? How long is long? Uh, I have remedies in my pharmacy that, that go back over 10 years, and they're still as potent today as they were when they were created. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, this is just a question for the board. Uh, when we're charging water, I read somewhere that they needed it needed to be mineralized. So I add either cell food or uh, trace minerals to the water before I charge it. Is that what you do, or do you think maybe perhaps with well water we wouldn't need to add anything at all? In all water, there are total dissolved solids. Now, what happens is they end up in solution. You don't see them until they played out in suspension. So as long as they're still in solution, the, the water's nice and pristine and it tastes great. You don't change your shower heads and so forth. But the particles are there. Okay. So that's what's picking this up. So do you have to add salt or some other mineral? No, because it's there. And I don't care if somebody ran something through a reverse osmosis. You cannot take all of the particulates out. There's still going to be some in there. Okay, we have a question from online about lupus. <clears throat> the question is this. A person has lupus, autoimmune disorder, but they also have bad kidneys. The kidneys are operating at 15% function. If you detox, will it overload the kidneys and put them into renal shock? Or should we just slowly edge into it? And I, I personally would treat the blood at the wrist and let the blood start to treat the kidneys. Uh, lupus is not a very well defined disease. I have books that say lupus doesn't exist, written by MDs, and I have books that, that give me a whole host of symptomology that fall underneath the, the lupus umbrella. So, you know, which one do you want today? Uh, but to stimulate the kidneys, I would do it back through creating greater health in the blood. Um, just jump up front. <clears throat> just as a side note here, we have had several reports, and we don't have them on the, the slides now, but we have had several reports of people having increased kidney function by treating the blood. Uh, diminishing the debris, the extra junk that's in your blood floating around and taking up space, when that's eliminated, the kidneys seem to respond with the oh thank you and they work a little better. Now whether that's going to get somebody off of dialysis, God only knows. But if we can just bring some improvement back, anything is better than nothing. So again, I agree that you start slowly, treat the blood, and 
Uh, Rondo, you might want to respond to the lupus thing just a little bit. Well, I, my experience has been with the class four, and we're not on that today. Okay, all right, we'll save that for later. Yes. Okay, I would like to add on to this for just a moment. Uh, a year and a half, about a year and a half ago, I had a patient that was on uh, going through dialysis three times a week. He was on the transplant list for a pancreas and both kidneys. He was weighing in at dialysis right at um, 100 kilograms, and he would weigh out at about 97 when he was done with the treatment. Wow. Did a series of 10 treatments on the blood, and he started weighing in at 97 and weighing out at 94. Now, I asked him, how do you feel? What, what's going on with you physically? And he said, I don't have to go, or I don't have a problem not being able to go to the bathroom. You know, that is relieved. The practitioner or the, the technician that was doing the dialysis for him was his girlfriend. She actually worked at the, the facility, and she was noticing a great improvement in his overall health just during that 10 treatment protocol. Now, where is he at today? I have no idea. I've not seen him in quite some time. I can respond. I did not use the UV wand, but the UV light it is the same source in the uh, product I was using with the lupus and stage 3 Lyme's patient. So I believe the application, though different, would the result would have been the same. So I can share that. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So I had a stage 3 Lyme's patient on seven medications under uh, Medicaid because she just couldn't get past all the symptoms. And we, uh, I put her under an umbrella in Texas of a DC who had her under upper cervical care, got her up out of the wheelchair so she could walk, but she could just stand and then sit. She couldn't actually walk. She could stand and sit. So we uh, took the uh, UV light to that office she came twice a day, and the first two days, I told her only use the, the UV light one time till we see how severe your detoxing is going to be. Because I don't know if you know much about limes, but there's like 16 stages that the uh, parasite transforms into and the nematodes go through before you come back to adulthood and lay eggs and start over. So you're doing, we're dealing with multiple cycles. So what we did was she went through two days, had a severe detox. She said it was worse than she even anticipated. She came back and used the UV light one time a day for the next three, had another severe detox, and did that continuously for the first two weeks. Then she went in and began to use it two times a day, morning and afternoon. At the end of 30 days with the UV light, she was off of two medications. She was standing, walking, and she drove her van and brought my, my unit back to me. Where did, so, you, where did you put the UV light on her? Well, this one, it, blood source is what we're talking about. Blood source. This one I was under the tongue, which technically if you can hold your tongue up that long, you could use the UV wand there. And I don't know if you'd need both of them. Would you think the amber and the ultraviolet? Amber UV. So you'd use both wands under the tongue or on the wrist because we're trying to clean the blood. For how long? Or intranasally? Or intranasally. If you're going to go intranasal, you want to limit that to no more than five to seven minutes. And on someone that has lupus or lines, you're dealing with chronic illness, you want to probably cut that down to three in my estimation because of the kidney overload situation. And involve your primary care. And yes. And like I said, I involved a, a DC, MD, some, someone else in that clinical trial. So they can be monitored. And she was seeing her MDs at the same time. Oh, let me finish that. The effects lasted for six weeks. She was gallivanting all over everywhere. And then they began to come back. So 30 days was not enough time. So I'm dealing with two cases right now that with UV light that had uh, African parasites different types. Gordia is one, and the other one was, I referred her to Dr. Vaughn because it was a malaria. I recognized the symptoms of malaria. So we used, we started with a crash <coughs> five minutes with the uh, high-powered class four. 
but then we transitioned into the UV light. And then the uh, both cases I sent to Dr. Vaughn for homeopathic remedies, but overnight they could tell a huge difference with just the UV benefits. And both of them now are six, eight weeks into it with no reoccurrence and strong recovery. And the one is using the UV light on a daily basis. The other one is just using the homeopathic because she doesn't have the UV. That's the Giardia case? It, no, yeah, the Giardia is still using the UV. Just to make sure, because I told her, you got to go 40 days minimum. We're not going to have another reoccurrence on um, too, too, too little time. Yes, sir. Is there any uh, notice effect on uh, pregnant women and minors or any special condition of the body? Okay, the question is, have we noticed any effect on uh, pregnant women, minors, or small children? I've had tremendous success on all of those. Uh, there's, there's been nothing contraindicated. Now, in all fairness, with a pregnant woman, I've certainly not put the paddles directly over the abdomen. I won't do it. But to assist with the blood, you know, in the, uh, in the blood regions using the, the wrist, I don't have any problem with that. Yeah, and children think it's cool. I mean, they really do. Oh, great. It's not a shock. <laughs> Was there another question? Okay, uh, we have another question online about using light therapy with pacemakers. I have not had a problem. Now again, I won't use it anywhere near the pacemaker. Frequencies are frequencies. Uh, but using it in the periphery, I've not had a problem. I don't point it at the, you know, <laughs> the, 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 the placement of the you know, pacemaker. But let me sidestep here with something else that's very similar, and that's an embedded TENS unit. Yeah, because I do have patients that come in that are in severe pain, and some of them have embedded TENS units where they use a remote control to turn it off before I will try or before I will start the, the uh, treatment. And I don't have any problems with it. There's no, there's no side effect. There's no residual uh, negative impact. And they can go and turn their, well, this one lady calls her TENS unit her thumper. It goes to 18 points through her body. And, uh, uh, the Spectrobrite brought her more relief than the TENS unit ever did. So she would come in, turn it off, I would treat her for 15 minutes, and she would go home. She was actually able to walk out of the office instead of being carried. Uh, sadly, she was one of those that was probably going to go to the 08 Olympics representing the U.S. in the equestrian uh, games. And somebody ran into the back of her car while she was at a stoplight. And her, her back was broken in several places, and then including her neck. And this is the consequence of all of that. She's been through 24 surgeries. The uh, Spectrobrite has been the only thing that's been able to bring her quick relief so that she can get around. And uh, it, it's worked like a charm for her. It really has. Wow. All right, anything else? All right. If you would, just make a closing statement for, for me, for, the, for posterity here about the response that you see in sleep and energy? Well, I'd like to start with that one. Two of the patient. This means everybody. If I'm running them on, let's say, a 10 treatment protocol, every one of them claims greater desire to take a nap through the first half of the treatment program. And then their energy starts coming up <coughs> from about the sixth treatment on. But everyone has come back and said, wow, I don't sleep in the afternoon, but I sure did yesterday. And I said, well, you're going to sleep again today, so enjoy it. And you know, don't ask me about all the, the physiology behind that. I just know that it happens with every one of them. OK. You know, one of the things, just really quickly, a lot of people have said to me, I don't feel it when they're getting the treatment because the paddles are cool. 
they're not hot and you're going to leave them on there. Sometimes it's a little, they can feel a little bit, but a lot of people don't feel it at all. And they don't actually think they're doing anything until they stand up and they start moving around and then they're going to go, oh, my, my back doesn't hurt. Oh, my knee doesn't hurt. Oh, my, you know, whatever. It's kind of surprising to your client because they really don't, usually they can't feel it. If they don't see the light, they're not feeling it, they're really astonished. It's pretty amazing. One thing I would recommend to anyone that is in a clinical setting is when before you do any treatment, I would ask the patient, what's your pain level? Exactly. Because at the conclusion, you're going to ask them again, now what's your pain level? And when you're using numbers 1 to 10, they can identify the pain better than nothing. And that gives you a much clearer picture. And then I have patients that or clients that will send me text messages on the way home. Pain's completely gone. You know, they're 10 minutes down the road. Or uh, they'll come back the next time and I'll say, now where is your pain level this time? Well, I'm at a 3. Well, you started at a 10 plus. You're coming back for second and third treatments at a 3. That's pretty monumental. So I recommend you always ask, where's your pain level when they first come in and at the first of every treatment? <coughs> I'm sorry, the question again? Like people who try to lie about it. Lie. 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 People who lie? Well, you can kind of look in people's it's, eyes. <laughs> it's, it's hard to lie. And one of the ways I, I keep people from trying to do that to me, if they come in and they say, well, I've got this pain, I'm writing it down you know, in a record on them. Mm -hmm. And I tell them always, now this is going to continue to do its job for another couple of hours after you've left. Even though we've turned it on, that's not the end of it. So then when they come back the next day and they say, well, before, before they can tell me too much, I start asking them, how are you doing now? They give me the answer and I say, okay, well, yesterday you told me this. And you told me this and you told me this. So I would call that progress, wouldn't you? And then they look at me, well, yeah, okay. I've done over 200 patients in less than two years. I have never had any of them say, I want my money back. Not one. Along with what Dr. Bond's saying, early on I learned the tape measure is also very invaluable yeah. because people forget that their ankle was this big around. And I'll give you an example. I was going in and out of a clinic every two weeks and I had a lady that was had enlarged ankle and it was painful. She couldn't stand to do her laundry, couldn't do, you know, she just couldn't, she could barely walk on it. And so after asking her three times in a row, do you notice any changes? No, I don't think there's any improvement at all. I said, well, you know what, we're going to pull the tape measure out, we're going to measure it this time. I started at 22 and a quarter above the ankle and 19 something below. Wow. It was really big. That was after the third high UV mm -hmm. trip. So I went for I think six more treatments every two to three weeks and I asked her, how's your ankle today? Well, you know, I can, I've been doing my laundry. It seems like I can iron my husband's clothes, but I'm not really seeing any improvement. So I said, well, let's measure today. It was down to nine and three quarters and ten and a quarter. Whoa! <laughs> so, point being, you need it in black and white, just like Dr. Vaughn said, because memory <laughs> seems to elude some people. Well, then there's the body image issues, too. Okay. You know, people, people see what they're afraid is really there. That could, right, the mental image is still being projected. And that, you're right, what you focus on becomes visually what, what's there, yes. like the quadriplegic or the leaf that was cut, right. it was still there. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. It's very easy to have a nine pain level, have it go to a three, and two days later you remember it as a six. Mm -hmm. Because you're not hurting as badly as you were before. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important to document as you go. And, and, and on that same point, many people will come in, they're out of ten, Mm -hmm. You're asking them, they're out of 10, and if you don't ask them first before you give the treatment, because they have, people have the expectation after the treatment, I'm going to be at a zero. Lots of people have that idea. 
despite the fact that they've been that way for five years or ten years or however long, and you know, they think that somehow we have mm -hmm. magic wands, That's right. which we do, but they may need more than one session, yes. multiple sessions mm -hmm. to calm the situation down. So I, I can't stress enough, it's really important to get them to, let, to, to set the expectation properly, find out in advance where they're at, and then remind them. And I love the measuring thing. And 22 is huge. I can't it's believe that. That's the size of some people's waist. You know? It's not mine. It's not <laughs> mine either. <laughs> there, there's something I like to add on to that, and it's a word of caution that I give my patients, especially the ones that come in and they have sciatic pain or low back pain. We treat it. Yeah, they climb off the table. They say, oh, I feel so much better. I tell them, okay, don't go grab the snow shovel. Don't go laying fence posts. Don't be stringing wire. Don't be doing anything that's strenuous because right now you have a false sense of security. Your body is out of the pain, which was keeping you from doing things. So because you're out of the pain doesn't mean you're out of the healing. We've just taken the load off so you can heal. Now go heal and let's follow up on this again. But for heaven's sakes, don't go out there and overstress yourself just because you're feeling better. Otherwise, I promise you, we're going to start at ground zero all over again. Very good point. Another thing, just on those same type of notes, is that. Uh, lost my train of thought there. Is the, anyway, the, the fact that the people do think that they're going to be well just so quickly like that, they don't, they don't really, they don't get that they do have a healing time that's a, an important part of that. And even if they do get to zero in the treatment time, that still means that they have a healing time that they have to go mm -hmm. through and they do need to avoid stressing the problem again. So, sorry, that wasn't the point I was going to make, but I can't think of that. <laughs> if there's another area not to use, the, uh, the paddles, don't put them on the thyroid. Avoid the thyroid. You can, you can charge the neck, the cheeks, the shoulders. Don't put them on the thyroid. Why is that? The jury is not in, so to speak, on what long-term ramifications it may have on the thyroid. And I call this mom. You know, and if mom's not happy, you know the rest of the story. So with today's problems with hypo and hyperthyroidism, let's don't create a problem where there isn't one. That is one of the contraindications in the higher UV lights. When we do those, but with the lights, I agree. Very careful about that. All right, I think that uh, we'll wrap it up for today. If you want to be part of the continuing educational process, if you'll get us your email address, info at millennialhealthsystems.com, send that to us, and we'll inform you as these occur from here on. Uh, as I said, probably the next one will be spent completely on each program and what we're finding and how it's working. <clears throat> so we'll take a little more time on those, and it probably will be at my office in the evening, and we'll have a session of an hour, hour and a half or so just on that. In six weeks, Abraham's daughter will be here, Dr. Charity from Ghana, and we'll have another one in March with her, so you can ask her and hear from her, her experiences. Hello, Charity. She's on with us today. Um, so we're looking forward to her being here and introducing you to her, and then Hopefully the third or fourth one will be the questionnaire. If you are interested in getting any of the, uh, we're going to re re repurpose this as SpectraGel uh, for pretreatment for light therapy. We're going to run a special to the end of the month, buy one jar, get one at half price. And you can get as many as you want between now and the end of the month. So it's $20 for the first one, 10 for the second one. And the retail is going to be $30. So just for this session, buy one. Get one half price. Okay. Uh, thank you for your time. It's been an interesting day. I've learned a lot, and we'll recontact you when we're ready for the next session. Thank you.